So we we have a we have an interesting array of uh, whiskey. Yes, we do, mate. Um, looking on your Eventbrite page uh, for it, it says we you sent out nine drams. So yes, I kind of surprised people. So, <laughs> so I, I don't have nine drams. You don't have nine drams. We and, did prepare and, and, for and nine drams, mate. But obviously. You'll know a little bit about what what they are. Hundred percent, yeah. What what? So, yes. um, I've got Brooks. Um, Brooks Grant, is number one. Yeah, Brooks number one. Grant Tain number two. Oh well, we actually have Spence Rock number two, but well, uh, that's, you, that's a smoky whiskey. I, it's okay. I Grant Rock is there. It's number five. Yeah. Okay. Uh, so number two would be Grant Tain. Uh, number yes. three is um, Svensky X. Yep, which is number four. That's okay. Yep. Number five is the Moment Caribbean. Yeah, Moment Caribbean. Number Sorry, three. number four. Okay. Sorry, number four, Moment Caribbean. Number five, Svensk Ruch. And number six will be Svensk Ruch Amerikansk Ech. There you go. That is the last one on the on the sheet. It's the only one that's right. And the, okay. and the fourth one. One and six are right. We'll mix the rest up. Yeah, yeah. Um, and then, listen, what we have, Mickey, here is we also have the Moment Leaden. Right, Okay. And I have a an apple blom. Yeah, okay, we can talk about apple blom. That's fine. And I also have a Caden Head, eleven year old. Okay, it, nice. So we tend not to know too much about it, but I would imagine it would come from. Uh, we'll, we'll talk about the cask and stuff like that anyway. Yeah. Um, as for the leading, I don't know much about that one. It's okay. Everyone has a drop, and they can all drink it. You know, yeah, we, yeah, can, yeah. we can discuss it. Ah, right. we'll have it all here. Right, I'll have it here. So yeah. Let me just get ginned up quickly on the lead. <laughs> ah, Google that. Google that yeah. you can. <laughs> oh, everything else, mate, I've got prepared. It's not a problem. Do no, you know right, I mean? and do you know what? It was only and Mickey, you know what happened was um obviously um Shane has been an absolute gent, you know, getting yeah. yourselves involved. Absolutely brilliant. And when the product came, I was like, you know what? Some of these bottles are smaller than others. They're five, yeah. you know, five hundred mil bottles. I was like, do you know what I need to do? I just need to get this out to as many people as as I can. Do you know what I mean? Um, so get as much out as can. And I thought I've got a big box. It comes with glassware. The, 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 which, honestly, mate, I've I've seen the boxes. You've done an absolutely tremendous job on that. Look, this is this is you today. This yeah, is yeah, yeah. what Mark Mara looks like. That's fantastic. That's that what fantastic. you guys look like. And that, that's because I give it. That's because I care. Not yeah, me. for sure. Yeah. Oh, well, Carl, um, we're we're doing an extra three drums, mate. Uh, yeah, I, I heard. I was uh, just in the background, sort of uh, Sorry, playing around Rob. with the uh, technicals. Music's Carl, gone at me, and that's that's so good. Can't hear me. I can hear you. Yes. Oh, all right. No, I can't hear Carl. Oh no. Let me just do a quick <laughs> refresh and come back in. Yeah. I can hear him. I can hear you, Carl. I can hear you. That's, that's good. Look at that. That's good. Uh, that, that, was, that was mint, that was mint. Yeah, I say those boxes do look pretty, pretty flesh. Yeah, I swear. Is it, if that's a nine as well in a, a good two-hour period, like I, I'm glad I'm not doing the full nine of drinking, to be fair, because if uh, <laughs> anyone's caught any Matt Mirror streams before, uh, my tolerance is still building, shall we say. <laughs> so if I have right. too many over a short period, woo, I get the old uh, the red face on the go. Right. But no, that's it. Yeah, that blood box mint, mate. How's it, how's it all gone so far? Anyway, so I caught the tail end of the uh, first little bit. It seems pretty cool. Yeah, so that was it. You know, it, it was a partnership uh, with the, the Wine and Spirit Institute. Um, they're based over, you know, based in Belfast. They've lots of members who are big wine fanatics, but they also, yeah. you know, take in different types of spirit tastings. Um, I done a, a tasting with them on, on whiskey um, and a journey through kind of Irish whiskey. And uh, we agreed, like, I think for the festival, it was a good thing to look at wine and whiskey pairings. Um, yeah. And, yeah, that, you know, it was good fun there. They had a, you know, they had a good, they had a good reception. So, yeah. Yeah. Uh, in, in, you in guys a, had a good reception. You know, your, your, your event sold out very quickly. Lots of people wanted Swedish whiskey. I don't know why, but a lot of people <laughs> wanted Swedish whiskey. Yeah, so I, th I think I will, we'll allude sort of more into it as we kind of, kind of go through it. But when I first sort of tried it, there is that kind of initial Swedish whiskey question mark yeah. and you're curious about it straight off the bat because you're like well, what Swedish is going to taste like and then once you do try it it's actually do you know what this isn't just a gimmick it actually genuinely does taste interesting um so I think you know that it's, it's there's already half the battle sort of won in terms of curiosity but then 
once you go beyond the curiosity, there's actually a decent quality liquid to kind of back that up. And I think, yes. you know, you can only go so far on like you know, gimmick or location or brand or whatever it is until you actually have to have the whiskey to, to back up the, uh, back up the claim. So, yeah. So see, see if we want to, Carl, have you got a pen and paper there just to take a quick note of something? Uh, I can grab one. Yes. Give me two seconds. Yes, mate. Is that you? Right. So, for for the for the for the for the consumer out there, we're doing the Bro Brooks whiskey. Yeah. And that's their bottle number one. So you. Yeah. So that's their bottle number one. Okay. And then the second, he was saying he wants to do the Grand T. Okay. Is that right? Yeah. 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 We'll go. Yeah, because that's light. I think I heard you say uh, Spent Rook, didn't you? Yeah, so we're going to do. We're going to. I think he he wants to do the Gronti, which is bottle number five. Yeah. So just in case you know, in case we're getting lost at some point, that's bottle number five. Okay, that's going to yep. be number two, the Gronti. Yeah. Um, and then where did he want to go? He wanted to go Spanish. Eck. Eck. Yeah. Yep. So so the number three is actually going to be bottle number four. Okay. Okay. So it's your running order. All right, and then we go. Caribbean was it? Yeah, moment Caribbean. Yeah, number yeah, four. Caribbean. So that bottle here is number three. Yeah. <laughs> okay. I know. Sorry. Right. And, and then number five. Then is Fen so this is Fen Schrock. Is number is number two. These bottles are number two. Yeah. So your number five is Fen Schrock, but it's number two. And the yep. last one's okay. The last one's a Fen Schrock American S. Yeah. And that's number six. Worries. Okay. And that is six. No problem at all. Magic. And then Brucey bonus. The Brucey bonus. So the, the next one then is number 14. Bottle number 14. I know it says on yeah. the card seven, but it's number 14, and that's Moment Leaden. And then we've got number 18 or number eight. And yeah. That's going to be Apple Bomb. Apple Bomb. Nice. Yep. Apple and then bomb. bottle number 13. Is that the Caden Head is an 11 year old um, cast strength. So, 11 year old uh, Caden Head cast strength. Okay, and that's number 13, but it's number nine in the card. Good so, stuff. Mickey, back. Yeah. So, what we're, Can you hear me? The, what we're doing with the bonuses, Carl, basically, is uh, at the end of the taste and say, guys, you have the three extra drums in your pack to drink at your own leisure. Exactly. Uh, there's lots okay. of information available on our website, macmira.com.uk. Exactly. Yeah. Um, Make that's what it's all knock about. yourselves out, all that sort of good stuff. Do you know what it was about, Mickey? It was appreciation of the fact that um, Macmara, first of all, wanted to get involved in the festival, provided great, great level of alcohol. We're going to come on and do a tasting. And I went, do you know what? I, I, we've, got, we've got some more food whiskey here. We've got more Macmara here. Let's get out to people. Let's not nice, let's, yeah. let's keep you know, let's keep the party going for Macmara as far as I'm Yeah, concerned. absolutely. Yeah, well, I like it. Like so listen, I'm going to I'm going to step back if you don't mind because there's two of you. You can play off each other. Yeah, yeah. that's what we normally I, do. I'm anyway. going to just take my camera off so you maybe don't see my ugly dick. <laughs> I will come back in at certain times and you'll see me because I just want I want to have the chat. Yeah. But, yeah uh, at the moment, I'm going to let you guys do your thing. Yeah. Magic. Super. What about what better way to spend a Tuesday afternoon? Do you know what I mean? Hundred percent. Company a few, few drums. <laughs> I'm Good, for that. Good man. Right, um, Brock, I we're suppose in. we'll start then. Yeah. So, uh, if you can hear me, I can hear you. Here, <laughs> ah, it's everybody that's here that wants to uh, wave a wee hello uh, in the comments. Uh, don't forget, we'll take questions um, as we go on, guys. We'll whack a poll up later on as well uh, to yeah. see which was your favourite whiskey throughout it. Now, I understand that you all got nine drums, you lucky people. <laughs> um, <laughs> but, so, but we're only going to cover six during the tasting guys okay so the the last three we'll, we'll tell you each one uh that we're going to do before we do it carl you took a wee note of the order we're going to do uh, i did yeah do you just uh, let people know yeah so we'll go because <laughs> uh i think yeah Burton could probably help us out with it as well we're going to start with the brooks uh and then we'll go grant say and eck so that'll be one five and four 
with the ones you've got. And then we're going to go uh, Caribbean, so three. Then the Svenskbrook, Amerikansk Esk, which is number two. That's going to go fifth. Uh, sorry, no. Svenskbrook, number two. That's going to be fifth. And then we're going to finish on Amerikansk Ek, which is number six. So one, five, four, three, two, six. That's one five just, four. It's just nice three, and easy numbers. It just floats <laughs> yeah. off, doesn't it, Carl? Just floats. Not only are you drinking, but you're also going to do like a logic puzzle in which all you're drinking exactly. as well. Right? Keep you on your toes for a Tuesday afternoon. <laughs> yeah. um, Most confusing tasting so far. Yeah. Yeah. I, li I like to, to, you know, go against the grain and just switch things up a little bit, guys. Keep you on your toes for a Tuesday afternoon, you know? <laughs> so, anyway, um, I'm Mickey, and this is Carl. Uh, we're representing uh, Macmeda for you guys today, Swedish Shingle Malt Whiskey. Uh, so a little, about, a little bit about the history of Macmeda. Uh, back in 1998, uh, there wasn't a Swedish uh, Shingle Malt Distillery at all. Uh, so eight friends that went to university together, that studied engineering together, uh, kept in touch when they left university and met every year at Salem uh, for a skiing holiday, basically. Uh, and in 1998, uh, they all brought uh, single malt whiskey to dinner with them. Um, yeah. and sh sh how cool is that? Just sitting about with your pals and everybody whips out your, your pre-dinner drinks and everybody's got a bottle of single malt. Fantastico. Yeah. Uh, Apparently so, that wasn't planned either. Yeah, no. It wasn't I just happened to bring it a random yeah. just whiskey each, yeah. Exactly. Um, so basically the, the conversation around dinner got to, well, why isn't there a single malt distillery in Sweden? You know, there's fantastic water sources, uh, there's fantastic barley growing, uh, you know, we've got oak as well, uh, yep. yeast, every, so everything around us really, uh, everything around them in Sweden uh, to produce a distillery. So they put their brains together, being engineers and all that sort of good stuff, uh, and got tore into basically establishing Macmeda. Uh, so from the outset, uh, Macmeda was fully focused uh, on creating a whiskey which was uh, quintessentially Swedish. Uh, the journey began with local barley, spring water, and Swedish oak. Uh, then, thanks to a lucky coincidence, Macmeda developed a 30 litre cask. Uh, the reason that came about uh, developing the 30 litre cask was the very first still that they built uh, for R&D purposes uh, yeah, yeah. with 100 litre still. So basically, the heart came out at around about the 30 litre mark. So they crafted the 30 litre casks, uh, which allows the whiskey to mature more intensively. Uh, even the smoky recipe has a Swedish signature, uh, which will cover. Uh, cover later on uh, and then we basically would mature our whiskey uh, predominantly uh, in the boldest mine which is an ex-iron ore mine uh, which is 50 meters below ground uh, it's just an absolutely beautiful setting but today McNamara produces whiskey with the same curiosity and experimental zeal as in 1999 uh, but now the groundbreaking gravity distillery uh, which harnesses the force of gravity to aid production and it's designed to substantially reduce the carbon footprint. So our, our brand new distillery goes from top to bottom as opposed to going uh, a, a traditional distillery which will go uh, lengthways. Uh, so guided by the historical knowledge of whiskey production, uh, MacMira employs its own methods to create innovative products using Swedish ingredients, which we'll talk about a little bit more in depth as we go through the, the, the six drams for you today, guys. Uh, let me just see if I can get up a wee, a wee slide. Oh, is this you messing around with tech? I like it. Yeah. Let's see. There you go. So, Look at that, mate. Uh, seamless. If anybody can see, there's our, uh, there's our gravity distillery. Uh, at the very top, we've got the sky bar, uh, and then the production, basically, area starts. Uh, the silo uh, feeds the whiskey in. Uh, sorry, it feeds the, 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 the malted barley in, uh, and then, then the five stages goes downwards. Uh, so since 2012, it began, it built in 2011 uh, and began production in 2012. And like it says on the screen there, guys, 45% less energy compared to a traditional distillery. Uh, the natural force of gravity is used as opposed to pumps. Uh, we've got heat, uh, heat recycling. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, so we keep a constant temperature. Uh, in the distillery, so there's no peaks and troughs uh, throughout the seasons. It's all one continuous, um, c continuous temperature, uh, and that allows then uh, to be more eco-friendly, basically with power generation, etc. Uh, and the rest of the products and production is used as energy source. We've got a biomass burner, etc. Yeah, it looks the part, doesn't it? It does look yeah, the part. Yeah, it certainly like. does. Dead, dead modern, dead striking. Yeah. 
Can't wait to yeah, get we're trying... over their names. Do you know what <laughs> I mean? As you say, do you know what I mean? Like, yeah, we need a field trip, don't we? Once they all this dies down. Yeah. So we touched a little bit there on, on the Gravity Distillery. Uh, uh, the first whiskey we're going to try, which I'll hand over to Carl. Uh, in fact, I'll let Carl speak about it. Carl, mm, yeah. my friend. Yeah. No worries. Uh, yeah, so we're going on the Brooks whiskey. So that's uh, bottle number one. I think that does uh, Mario up with you. So yeah, uh, get yourself a little pour of that one. So basically, the Brooks whiskey is our signature single malt. Um, bottled at 41.4% ABV. Uh, no chill filtering, no colour added on this one. Um, it's, I guess the way I sort of describe this when I'm on tastings and things like that is it's our, it's our kind of go-to whiskey. Um, you know, you've got in our range, you start with things like the Mac, which does have a touch of caramel and it's uh, uh, bottled at 40%. And that's used for kind of creativity and things like that. But where you sort of, for us, in terms of single malt Swedish whiskey, Brooks whiskey is the one we kind of jump in at as our kind of go-to. Um, really good, easy drinking, everyday kind of whiskey. If they're, you know, I think probably in the right audience breakfast to say everyday whiskey. whiskey. <laughs> bre- bre- yeah, so yeah, one of the lads said breakfast whiskey. Um, I'll be honest, I've not had, had one for breakfast uh, just yet, but uh, it's it's on my to-do list anyway. <laughs> um, but yeah, so the the bottling of it as well, if you do end up picking yourself up sort of a full-size bottling of it, um, there's loads of basically little tidbits around uh, Mac Mira as a distillery, as an on the whole, um, and it talks sort of more about the history uh, as you go around the bottle. Hang on, let's uh, get that in front of the camera there. So yeah, you've got things like, you see the 95.5 there? Uh, if any of you are familiar with Jim Murray and his Whiskey Bible, uh, he's a big fan of it, 95.5 he's got on there. Uh, we've got our little like original logo on the bottle. Hang on, there we go. Um, images of like our original still uh, on there as well. You've got the Gravity Distillery down the side. That's what breakfast is go. It's never too early for breakfast. <laughs> um and then, yeah, down the bottom as well. And this, this pops up on quite a few other bottles as well. You've got sort of eight dimples that sit around the bottom uh, of the bottle down there. Uh, and each one of them is to kind of represent eight of the founding, founding fathers, founding mothers um, of Mac Mira uh, as well. So I'll, I'll not yap uh, anymore, uh, or at least at the moment. Uh, everyone there, uh, get yourself a little bit in the glass. Uh, we'll go through the taste and do a little bit more around the, um, around the old uh, caskings and whatnot. So on the nose, quite simple, straightforward, uh, butterscotch. Citrus pear, banana, and a little bit of mint uh, on the back end of the nose. And in terms of freshness, get it on your palate. Fresh fruit, pepper, a little touch of spicy toffee kind of develops uh, as you as you linger on it a little bit. Uh, and then as you go into the finish, you get a sort of spicy oak, maybe a little bit of apple pie coming in there as well. Uh, but nothing too sort of aggressive um, it's a really we, we've heard sort of people who never tried uh, swedish whiskey before uh, and hopefully some of you guys are trying it for the first time as well it's a great one to start off with straight in it's got sweetness in there it's a little touch of spice um it lingers but it doesn't linger around too much there's not a lot of that alcohol burn to it as well um but yeah go on Mick. what's uh, what's your general takeaway on the uh on the brooks i like it, it I, 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 I enjoy it because i enjoy a quite nice bit of healthy uh or a mm. healthy bit of that white pepper on my on my bacon sandwich in the morning do you know what i mean and, and, yeah. and it speaks to me in that way uh so i i get for the for the spices i get that uh, that white pepper influence i really yeah. quite enjoy it really quite moorish yeah. uh gets yeah. me elevating quite nicely yeah definitely so uh i don't know if you go to a little bit more in the presentation later mick but this is sort of one of our um built on one of our kind of founding flavor profiles as it were so this is built on our elegant recipe uh, and you'll see this is kind of like a through line through through a different ones in our range um in terms of casking you've got 200 liters of first fill bourbon in there uh, 100 liters of swedish oak 100 liters sherry cask and then 200 liter ex bourbon cask as well um we don't go on age uh, we're essentially in terms of the way angela creates her whiskies it's, matter, it's around creating a, a flavor profile um, we are a relatively young distillery as it is anyway, so sort of age for isn't really a massive, massive number. Um, uh, and, you know, we, we can't sort of experiment massively, amount, massive amounts with, with age. Uh, and also having a 30 litre cask, we actually don't need a long, long time uh, to be able to impart interesting flavours. Uh, quick question on duty in Sweden. Uh, Mick, you're a bit more au fait with the duty yeah, side of things. Yeah, so it's a similar, it's probably more duty actually, mm. but... Um, we wanted to keep it. We wanted to keep the ABV low uh, for those reasons uh, and for accessibility to everybody and keep it at a price point. Uh, but forty percent just didn't work, uh, basically. So yeah. the forty-one point four percent was literally where it just started to to take on its own character. Forty uh, yeah. percent didn't quite work for it. Uh, Angela said, "No, 
this, this isn't the, the flavor profile I want. Uh, they got a 41.4. I went, yeah, that's that's doing the business there. Yeah. So uh, so BWW Whiskey Jack, hope that answers your question. Yeah. I was, I was going to say, um, I've just seen John's comments as well. Anyone else got any sort of, any of your notes, comments, or um, uh, tasting, tasting notes, anything like that you've got that pops up to you while you're a, uh, while you're tasting along with us, bang it in the chat. Definitely, we'll try and read out best we can as well. Uh, and something I always like to do as well, um, you know, if we were there in person, but hopefully we can do this virtually. Um, is if you're trying it alongside other people, what do other people kind of get from it? That's why I like to bounce off to you, make you see what you get. Yeah. Um, one of our other brand ambassadors, Lawrence, he's a he's a big uh, kind of cake um, and sort of like baked goods kind of uh, fan. So he always links things into like apple pie, banoffee pudding, things like that as well. Um, Swedish barley. Yeah, uh, it, sorry, Jen. If that's a uh, Swedish barley uh, yes. in terms of a uh, flavour, yeah, it's a, it is Swedish barley. It's about, um, I think we're about fifty kilometres from the distillery, aren't we? With our barley, Mitch. Sorry? We're yes. not. We're not far away at yeah, all. No, with our, far, with our barley. Much all our ingredients come from about a fifty kilometre radius from us. Mm -hmm. uh, so everything, like, you know, everything uh, that we use that goes into the whiskey, guys, is is Swedish, apart from American oak casks, obviously. Yeah. Uh, but no, the barley, the water source. Uh, the yeast, uh, even the wood to a certain degree in that as well. Yeah. Uh, obviously, we're using a Swedish oak, but no, everything is uh, Swedish. Yeah, the, the yeast um, the yeast itself is very, very popular in, uh, in Sweden and other Scandinavian countries. It's called uh, Kronjast. Um, if anyone is Swedish and in the chat here, I do apologise for my poor <laughs> Swedish pronunciations. But yeah, it's, it's something that's very, very popular in that part of the world. Used a lot in baking uh, as well. Uh, so it made sense to use, again, a, a Scandi uh, yeast. Uh, in our in our liquid but yeah nice easy light uh nice light drinking start um do you want to take us through the grant tay mickey definitely mate most definitely oh uh, yeah we've got a bit of poll running as well uh down south as well so yeah bang in your where you think this one sits um and again you know we've got a big range of sort of different whiskies that we're sort of trying obviously you've already tried some today but also some different ones across the range we're trying as well um, so for me, when I'm ranking a whiskey, uh, I'd like to think about, um, in terms of price point, what kind of experience am I getting for that price point? Because, you know, sometimes you, you can't, well, you can't compare like a 30, 40-year-old whiskey sometimes really to like a, you know, a, a non-age uh, sort of five, six-year-old whiskey. So, you know, in terms of price point, I think we're around 40, 42 quid on the website, aren't we, Mick? Yeah. For this one. Um, so that for me is always kind of a factor. Am I getting enough kind of enjoyment? Uh, from this whiskey, uh, in terms of where it's at price wise, yeah. £43.50 for Brooks. Thank you. So, that takes us on then to Grant. So, just a couple of uh, yeah, Harry really seems to be happy that uh, we're using Swedish ingredients, so that's good. It's all right, it's, it's uh, whole, like English it. name translation, Carl Brooks whiskey. What for? Sorry, the Brooks Whiskey, English yeah. translation. Yeah. Um, so, whiskey, whiskey. Uh, I think this, this is probably one that's one of the, the least interesting in terms of the, the naming conventions. But Brook is essentially, it's sort of a byword for use or work um, or factory. And it, it stems from MacMurdo Brook, uh, which is where our original distillery was. Um, and basically, it's, it's, an old, uh, it's an old ironworks. Um, you can see that again on the, on the bottle, uh, on the box as well. Uh, but yeah, it's an old ironworks as well. Um, yeah, I know the names of fossil. Yeah, no worries. Uh, yeah, so yeah, yeah, so basically, it's just a nod to that old that old factory um, where we had our original distillery. Um, so yeah. So green. Uh, sorry. So Mac Mira. Uh, Mac is uh, Swedish for basically midgy, uh, small annoying insect, and Mira is basically swamp uh, or mire. <laughs> uh, so. <laughs> so the, the the midgy swamp basically um yeah <laughs> so that's um yeah that's so that's mac Mira and brooks whiskey so uh yeah. mac Mira, midgy swamp uh, and brooks uh, is basically factory uh or or useful factory use, uh, yeah yeah I think we should refer to the uh, refer to the rest of them just as Midgey Swamp. <laughs> yeah, just Midgey Swamp. So we're going to Midgey <laughs> yeah. Swamp Grant Tay now. Uh, <laughs> Grant Tay uh, being green tea, guys. Uh, the reason for that, uh, so Mac Mira uh, Grant Tay uh, as, a sing, uh, as a Swedish single malt uh, that's been finished in newly saturated ex Oloroso casks. Uh, and we saturated those casks 
um, with four different kinds of green uh, of Japanese green tea. Uh, we diluted the green tea down with neutral green spirit. Uh, to activate it, then we mixed it with Oloroso, uh, and then we put it into ex Oloroso casks. Um, so the, the the green tea. So um, Angela's one of Angela's uh, other passions is is Japanese green tea and Japanese culture. Yeah. Uh, so she managed to um, team up with a, a Japanese uh, tea blender in Sweden, uh, Yoko Uno. Uh, and they they had a big chat and they had a talk etc. Uh, and the the four teas that they came up with. Here we go. Uh, is uh, <laughs> you there think you my bad? My Japanese is even worse. <laughs> yeah. me, honestly, so we've got Yami Sencha, Yami Goyokuri, Kaioribo Hochicha, and Yami Matcha Shinobi. Uh, so yeah. So the, the, the Sencha is actually a rich, soft, and sweet green tea with a deep taste uh, from the first harvest. Um, the Goi Kuru is an elegant and sophisticated tea with lots of sweetness and umami uh, from the first harvest also. Uh, so you get from the first harvest, you're getting all that, that, that goodness there. Uh, the the Hochicha is nutty, round, and delicate with roasted tea leaves from the first harvest. And uh, the Yami Matcha Shinobi is a rich green tea made for tasty matcha teas for cooking and baking, uh, yeah, it doesn't say. Kind what like the, that's kind of the, that that's kind of the big earthy one, that isn't it? Like the yeah. sort of binding, like kind of yeah. the body uh, green tea. That one, basically. Um, yeah. yeah. So we, we we took that, mixed it with our uh and filled some casks with it. We also used uh, first filled Swedish oak on this. First filled bourbon. Um, uh, the, the Swedish oak casks were 100 liters. The first filled bourbon was 100 to 200 liters. Uh, new and first fill Oloroso, and obviously the saturated Oloroso, uh, 128 litres. Uh, all those casks together, uh, I believe, Carl, correct me if I'm wrong, 20,000 bottles for our seasonals, roughly? Uh, yeah, somewhere between fifteen and 20,000, depending on the release. Uh, yeah. And this one was uh, spring, summer 2019. Yes. Yeah, so luck 2020 said, even, so, sorry. Yeah, 2020. <laughs> yeah. The last one I'm losing track of what, what time it is in the world, <laughs> all this lockdown malarkey. <laughs> yeah. So is that somebody of Brook using or are using an Iron Brook yet? Which yeah, one, this yeah. one's a Dad Brook or a Paper Brook? Oh, okay, cool. Thank you very much, Spirits of the World. Yeah, uh, yeah. So, so basically, yeah. So, so big like industrial factories, really. Yeah, small industrial community. Brilliant. Yeah. But so we weren't too far off there, Carl. We weren't too yeah. far off. As I say, yeah. So yeah, it was, it was interesting with the with sort of Yuku Yuko Yuku Yuko Ono. Um, because she essentially her her business was was importing Japanese green teas into into Scandinavia and distributing yes. them into Scandinavian countries, basically trying to introduce um, what to her sort of you know what traditional green tea is and should be uh, into that particular market. Um, so it kind of made sense in terms of the collaboration. You know, as a Swedish whiskey maker, we're always focused on the finest ingredients, a dedication to craft. Uh, you know, coming up with something that is really interesting and innovative. Um, and it just tied in in terms of two ethos of, of what the two companies were trying to achieve. It made sense that we kind of had this collaboration. Um, and obviously, just to sort of go on to the fact that you're drinking bottle five now, which we originally swapped with number two, um, when Mickey sort of goes through the tasting notes with you as well, hopefully it makes sense as to why we're kind of, we're building up sort of the flavor profiles in terms of um, what Mac Mirror is all about. Um, and so I think that makes sense when we, when we go through the actual tasting side of it. So yeah, over to you, Mick. Yeah, so our, our seasonal range, guys, um, since 2013, we've released uh, an autumn spring, uh, sorry, a spring summer and an autumn winter every year. Uh, the spring summer tends to be quite light, uh, like you've got in front of you now. Last spring summer, we did, uh, and you've got it in your tasting pack as well, guys, is the apple blum, uh, the Calvados yeah. casks. Uh, and in the winter, we tend to use more of like the, the berries and darker stuff, really. Uh, so last year that was what was last year? What was last year? Winter Soul. Winter Soul, wasn't winter it? Soul. Yeah, the winter sun. Uh, so that was that was pork casks that went into yeah. that one, which was beautiful. So yeah. Um so guys, the, the, this this one changes every time I go back to it for myself. Yeah. Um uh, a lot of people say they don't get green tea, some people do say they get the green tea. That's going to be completely down to you guys. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Uh, so don't forget, as we're nosing and tasting along with you here, please bang in the comments uh, any questions that you have 
uh, any comments about the whiskey, that would be great. That helps us uh, get more information across to you guys as well. Let us know what mm -hmm. you want to know. Uh, so on the nose, get a nice spicy floral, red berries and fruits, with the, obviously with the notes of the green tea. I get that traditional, that, that white pepper. Yeah, brilliant, Jason. Happy days. Uh, dried grapes, citrus, pear, and forest berries. So there's, there is quite that, that Oloroso crossover in there as well uh, with yeah. some of the lighter yeah. notes that you maybe get from the green tea. But I'm not, a, I'm not a massive purveyor of green teas, so I couldn't tell you what those particular four green teas would give you. Mm. Um, so, yeah, so when people say it, uh, more matcha than green, okay, cool. It's good to know. Sorry, this yeah, see, that, 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 I think that kind of makes sense. Kind of Sorry. So, Emma, uh, what we do is actually we mix uh, four types of green tea. Uh, we dilute them down with um, natural grain spirit. Uh, and then we mix that with Oloroso. And then we fill ex -Oloroso, fresh Oloroso casks with that for like six to eight months uh, mm. to uh, to taint the Oloroso casks, basically. Uh, that's how we get the, and then obviously that's emptied out, and that's how we get, that's how we incorporate the green tea into the distillation. Mm. It's just, it's just a beautiful, really is a really good explanation of a summer whiskey. Yeah, yeah. If people go, oh, I don't know, what do you mean by summer whiskey? I just give them a jam of this, quite frankly. Yeah. It's, yeah, it's light. You know, you can imagine this uh, on the beach or a wee country walk of an afternoon of a summer's afternoon, like you know, absolutely beautiful. Yeah, it is a lovely drink. Yeah, yeah, it's, so, it's one that when we do, I say when we do the uh, when we do the shows, you know, in in, in normal world, I guess it were when we're out and we get to sort of see people face to face and we get people trying them. It's one that jumps out and uh, sort of it grabs the attention. I guess on on the first instance because it's a green tea. You know, you've got yeah. green tea influence in there as well. Um, but also when you actually taste it on the palate, it's 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 still interesting without being overpowering. Um, I think for me, it is a step up on the Brooks whiskey in terms of complexity, yes. um, but it's not overpowering. Um, in terms of bottle, I think we're at 46.1 as well, aren't we? We're at the magic 46. number. 46.1, mate, yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. Well, 46 .1 one first one, yeah. yeah for, for the majority of our releases, 46.1 is our magic number. Um, it's the number where uh, Angela feels most comfortable with, most happy with. Um, slight bitter edge. Some to over yeah. So again, for the the sweetness of sort of for me presents all up in the front. I think it does dissipate slightly and turns into a slightly kind of, and I think this might be potentially the matcha influence that the slightly kind of yeah, yeah. it's still sweet, but it's a little bit earthy, a little bit drying, a little bit bitter. Um, as you kind of feel, as you kind of sort of live with it a little bit more. I mean, this this is one of the reasons I love representing Macmira. Mm -hmm. um, you know, while we do keep a lot of traditions with with what a lot of people associate with whiskey production. We're not we're not shackled by some of the rules really. Yeah. So the the cast exploration that you can and you know the addition that we can see here uh, of using casks that held uh, that held green tea, it's just yeah. it's phenomenal. Do you know yeah. what I mean? It is absolutely phenomenal. Yeah. So yeah. So on, on the palate, uh, fruity and floral finish with a fine vanilla, herbal green tea notes, green apples, and finishing with a light spiciness. Uh, I'd agree with most of that. Yeah. Uh, yeah, John Davies says it's perfect at 46.1. Yeah. When I first tried it, I I, uh, I kind of got an oiliness uh, from it. but and I, and I thought it was kind of, I thought that was kind of unique to green tea. But the more I try uh, the Grant say, the more I try sort of different kind of where whiskies across the range, the more I kind of feel like it's, it's something that's quite um, descriptive of, of our range, as it were, yeah, that yeah. kind of, that sort of, it's it's the thick ish mouthfeel. It's not overly sort of overly rich, sweet thick. It's just sort of like a kind of there's a, there's a good amount of body to it as well. Potentially it's something to do with the uh, you know the the overall youth of the whiskey that it's got that kind of punch to it. But um, but yeah, I think this is a lovely drink of this one. Yeah. So this is available at uh, fifty nine pounds ninety from our uh, mm. from our retail shop. Um, we'll put up in the offer as well, guys. Uh, before oh, yeah, the end. yeah, good shout. Uh, we've actually got um, a twenty percent discount to offer you guys. Uh, which will last a week, uh, and that's any any of the the ones that we're tasting today. Mm -hmm. um, we're twenty percent off uh, on our web shop. We'll provide the link and and the code there in the office yeah. section as well, guys. Yeah. Okay. Um, we should we'll say any of the yeah. any of the first six uh, that we're trying. Yes. Um, and we can maybe double check and see if we can do something for 
um, possibly the apple blonde, maybe. I don't know what yeah. situation with the lead in. Uh, but def definitely, definitely for the first six ones we're going to try, uh, that offer will be available. And we'll see if we can sneak in the apple bomb as well. Yeah, we we'll definitely uh, well. cut one for the for the Caden heads one. We don't, we don't. <laughs> yeah, that'd be nice, wouldn't it? Yeah. So, got anybody else got any other, uh, or qu anybody got any questions uh, or yeah. any uh, in, the in the basket? Nice one, John. I like it. Nice. I like it. It's, and it, to be fair, it's, it's definitely worth doing as well because if you do, if you are interested in it, and like I say, you know, price point wise, are you getting enough um, in terms of interesting drink at that sort of price point? I absolutely think we are uh, with green tea. Um, I'd even think that if I wasn't wearing the shirt. Um, but yeah, these seasonals are very, very popular. You know, it's Angela's chance to kind of be as experimental as she can and kind of push it. Um, and this is one that's done really, really well for us. And we've tend to found that with our seasonal expressions, they actually don't hang around that long. You know, it 15, really 16, 17,000 bottles quite quickly goes down into the sort of sub 1,000 mark. Um, I think we've got sort of, we're down to sort of less than 500 on a couple of bottles that are only like, um, sort of like 12 to 18 months ago, aren't we? So. John Denny, shipping to the south. I take you in the south of Ireland. Uh, I would imagine so, yeah. If you have a look on our website, uh, macmillan.co.uk, uh, they'll be able to tell you there. Awesome. Yeah. Some good feedback so far there, guys. Really enjoying that. Really enjoying that. Uh, yeah. Anybody got any other questions about the Grand Té? Anything else you want to add on it, Mix? No, like I said, every time I go back to this, though, every time I reopen a bottle, uh, and you know, obviously, we've been for a few bottles now, doing various tastings, etc. And you know, yeah. I've bought some for my own, for my own, uh, for my own pleasure, um, your own research, for my own exactly. Um, really, honestly, they're they're, they're beautiful. They yeah. really are beautiful. Uh, and the the it's just different every, every single time I get back to it. Something always pops up. Do you know what I mean? That I go, oh, yeah. I didn't get that before. I didn't get that before. And yeah. believe it or not, even though this is quite light. This will take a single drop of water uh, and help mellow that spiciness down if the spiciness um, is not your thing. Uh, but it helps bring out some of those more apple flavours as well. Absolutely phenomenal. Yeah. yeah. So next, we are moving on to... Svenski Ek. Ek, yeah. Yeah. So, hand you over to Carl. Do you want me to Svensk, yeah, take yeah. it away? Yeah, man. Uh, so, yeah, this is bottle number four, Svens Ek, bottled at 46.1%. Um, answers on the postcard. Anyone in the chat, Svens Ek, do you want to translate that for us? Have a bash. You got 30 seconds. <laughs> yeah. Well done, Rowan. Yeah. Yeah, well done, Rowan. Swedish oak. That's the one. Yeah, so Svensk Ek, literally. Was that a good lucky guess, or did you actually know? <laughs> no way to prove it otherwise, so just exactly. say, say the exactly. man knows it. Man knows it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yes, yes, but nice um, one, Rowan. Yeah. Good guess. Good it, guess. It, it, it makes sense. Sort of phonetically, it does sort of translate over. So, yeah, sweet. Svensk Ek translates literally to Swedish oak. Uh, and the reason being is that 10% of the liquid uh, <laughs> in... <laughs> yeah. Uh, ten percent of uh, all the liquid that goes into uh, Svensk Ek um, is from one hundred percent Swedish oak casks. Um, so that's all it needs. Only ten percent of the liquid in that entire batch to make Svensk Ek goes in is from one hundred percent Swedish oak casks because it's such a um, such a dominant sort of flavour in terms of what it imparts. Uh, what it imparts Swedish elk, um, not quite elk. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, um, so yes. Yeah, hmm. so, yeah, so why Swedish oak, uh, I guess, is the other question. You know, is it just a gimmick in terms of, oh, you just want to stick some of the Swedish in there, sell it, the name Swedish on it? Yeah, it's fine. It's a marketing ploy. It's actually not. Um, Swedish oak uh, does carry a different flavor profile to North American oak, for example. Um, it's to do with the climate in which it grows up in. Uh, as you can imagine, at that sort of latitude, you're, you're talking about sort of very, very harsh, changeable climates, uh, where it's broadly quite cold. It is very difficult for the for the wood itself to grow. Um <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. Luckily, there's no prizes for getting it right. So, uh, so yeah. Sorry about that, John. <laughs> um, so yeah. So, 
Uh, so it is quite a difficult climate for the oak to grow up in, uh, in, in, in that sort of latitude. Uh, and as a result, when it does grow, you get less wood sugars prevalent in the wood, uh, less xylose and lignin. Um, and the, the oak does go very, very straight. Um, the reduction sort of removal of that, that xylose and lignin in it, um, what that does from a flavor point of view, when you're talking about casking, um, it takes away a lot of that sort of uh, vanilla, caramel, butterscotch that's very prevalent in North American oaks and as a result, sort of bourbons. Um, and presents more the kind of uh, spicy, um, sort of nutty, the kind of uh, sandalwood type sort of flavor for a fast kind of through. Uh, predominantly sort of spice, I think, is something that will jump out uh, from this one when you get it on your palate. Um, so why Swedish oak? Uh, so in terms of history, a um, little bit of history that's on a Tuesday afternoon for you. So way back in the 18s, sort of, um, the 30s. Swedish royal family. I said 30s, but, you know, it's, it's yeah, around that time. Um, the Swedish royal family, the Swedish crown, essentially um, – uh, they sent out a group of guys to go and find a good place to grow some Swedish oak fruits because we know we, we, we kind of saw at that time there was a lot of conflict going on. We needed to have um, more wood for shipbuilding um, at that particular point. So go find us a place where we can grow a load of oak uh, so we can hack it down and make a load of warships from it. Good stuff. Find a little spot on a place called Vrsingso Island and they planted around 300,000 trees. Uh, on that plot of land there. So they, they definitely went for it, uh, planted a load of these trees. Um, whether or not some, that someone didn't email someone or, you know, something got lost in the way uh, in the post, but uh, oak takes a bit of a while to grow. Um, so these ships with us is kind of in sort of uh, immediate need for it. And yes, I can see why you'd sort of want to forward plant a little bit and think, well, we're going to keep building ships out of wood, right, for, for combat purposes. Yeah, until you sort of have like an industrial revolution and sort of you know, <laughs> ships start to be made of metal. So um, it's an so spanner in the works. <laughs> yeah, yeah, basically. So right, brilliant. We've got all these oak trees ready for uh, uh, harvesting and turning into ships. Uh, yeah, sorry about that. We we make our boats out of metal now. Um, oh well, uh, but never fear. You know, you've got a load of you've got a load of oak that can still be used for other purposes. Um, there's a little Swedish furniture company you may have heard of. Um, you know, you can make furniture, <laughs> wood flooring, um, and obviously casks as well. Uh, so for us, we'll use it as casks, absolutely no dramas. Um, so, yeah. Thank you, Spirits of the World. I thought it was actually later than that, 15th century. Um, so, yeah. So in terms of casking, uh, we've got X bourbon in there, as mentioned, Swedish oak uh, and Oloroso casks. Uh, in terms of the time it spends in the Oloroso, in the Swedish oak casks. It's only around 18 months to two years, so it's not that long that it goes into those casks. Again, like I said, it doesn't take much to impart those flavours on the actual whiskey itself. Um, so, if you go yourself a little pour, on the nose, fruity, citrus, apple, pear, there's oakiness coming through there, and for me at the back of the nose as well, I do pick this one up, toasted bread on the palate. Bang, straight away, spice, sandalwood, dried ginger, uh, fruity, and then it turns into sort of a deep, sweet caramel and honey. And then the finished. So simply in the official notes, we've got balanced with a hint of dark chocolate. Uh, for me, I didn't get the dark chocolate as much at first, but for me, it definitely grows into that kind of, that sort of deep, rich, um, slightly bitter sweetness. You've still got that lingering spice in there as well. Um, again, another one, whether or not you're up for sort of adding water or not to it. Um, it is always worth adding a drop, I think, to the Svensk Ek. Uh, I think it does open out a little bit more. Um, but again, it's all down to personal preference, uh, however you want to go about it. So I get a little John, drying as well. Uh, yeah. yeah, so John, daily good benefits. How does the spirit uh, uh, between about the eight and ten years eight, yeah. and a low char level on the cask? Uh, yeah, it's not a heavy char. Uh, to, to just but there's it's enough to obviously start releasing the oils and stuff like that inside the wood. Yes. Um, uh, for Spirit of the World, yeah, that the 15th century, uh, on Vitzing Sir, that was the introduction of uh, oak to Sweden. Um, when we mentioned 1830, that's when the royal family sent out um, a, a, a gang of people to find the perfect way. Uh, what they actually did, they 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 come upon a, a crofter's shelter, uh, on Vitzing Sir. Uh, with some really, really good straight trees there. Uh, and they went, this is the place. So they took this a the tree one. They took a tree back to Stockholm to the Royal Family of the Royal Navy. 
and went, this is where we can grow this sort of trees. And they went, fantastico. So yeah, so for the 15th century was when the, uh, was when oak was introduced to Vitzing Cell. Good stuff. So that's just yeah. my, my, my wee geek corner bit. <laughs> yeah, that's no, because I remember you, you, like my geek you, uh, you brought in the whole uh, the the royal family and all the all the rest of it from that side of thing. Which yeah, again, I find sort of fascinating. Um, so yeah, what's um, what's people's takes on the Spence X? So where where do you fancy uh, where do you rate this one? Again, forty six point one magic number for us. This is part of our core range as well, I should yeah. say. So while uh, the Grant Tay was uh, part of our limited seasonal range, uh, we hope. Svent Ek in some format is going to be around sort of for, for a long time, long time to, uh, to go. Yeah, one of our core range bottles, and I think we are, well, I don't know the resale price top of my head, Mick, do you on this one? 40? Four, yeah, 46. 46 yeah, I thought so. 46. 46 51, sorry. 51. 51.30. 51.30. So yeah, any comments, takeaways on the uh, Svens Ek? I was just, I was just going to interject there, Carl. Go for it. Yeah. No, the Svens Ek on the we have it down here is forty six point one percent. Yes. Yes. Super. That's here. Tell me this. Um, in terms of the whiskies yourself. Would you would you be drinking these on a regular basis? Is this something you put in front of Irish whiskey or in front of Scotch whiskey? Is this now, yes. is this now preference? You know, you you know from from those types of whiskies. Go, on, Mick. You go first. On the, yeah, I'll no, um, I, I certainly do. Uh, Svens Yeah, especially uh, is one. Cause obviously, you get you've got your dyed in the wool Irish and Scotch whiskey guys. Do you know what I mean? That I'm, I'm not saying they stick their nose up or anything like that. Other uh, international whiskies, etc. But they may be a bit more standoffish. Uh, this is one, uh, Svens Yech, uh, especially, is one I like to get under the nose of, of Irish whiskey junkies. Um, okay. And Svens Gruch, to a certain degree, uh, which we'll come on to in a little bit, I'd like to get under the nose of uh, guys that like really peated whiskies, etc. Yeah. Uh, just to say, guys, you know, we've got spirits here that, that can live up to uh, what you're doing as well, you know, your flavour profiles, etc. Uh, this matches up with that, so please, please don't discard us. Uh, give us a try, and I do, I do quite enjoy um, putting this French gear in front of people. Yeah, Excellent. yeah, and, yeah for, and for me, it's a case of, um, I think for me, when you say sort of like necessarily maybe above Irish or above Scottish, I actually, I, I don't, I, I don't think it would necessarily go above. I think across all three would sit alongside, and kind of depends on what mood I'm sort of going for. I think that was one of the things for me that was sort of, sort of the, the first thing that, that, that Mac Mirror and Swedish Whiskey had to do for me was, um, is it worth being part of the conversation? Um, and the more and more I try, you know, I've sort of had a good 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 chance to live with the brand now and itself. The more I try, the more I think, actually, do you know what, in terms of where you sit, uh, for price point across the range uh, and what yeah. experience I'm getting in terms of depth of flavor or interesting cask finish or story you're trying to tell. Uh, I think for me, it sits as sits comfortably as part of that conversation. Um, and in my experience, sort of tasting many different whiskeys across the uh, from across the world, they me for me personally, they can't all sort of do that. Um, yeah. you know, I find, I find some sort of some ones are slightly more overrated than others, etc. But yeah, I think for me, Swedish whiskey is definitely part of the conversation. I'm gonna, um, I'm, gonna let you, I'm gonna let the two get back to it because it's just great crack, wasn't it? So, <laughs> <laughs> Cheers, <mate. laughs> yeah, pleasure. No bar. We, we, we try, we try. Yeah, yeah, and, and that's the thing, sort of like uh, that. John's sort of kind of alluded to in the comments there. You know, um, bad whiskey coming out of Europe, but Mac Mirror is not one of them. Yeah, so hopefully, you know, the more you're trying this, if it's your first time trying Mac Mirror as well, guys, I'm hope hopefully you sort of seeing where we're coming from and we're not just here as salesmen to say oh buy into this brand it's fantastic because genuinely we're talking about it because we enjoy drinking it um and hopefully you can enjoy drinking it uh, as well um so yeah. yeah so just to give you a, a brief outline guys uh our our uh, our core range is made up of four whiskies mm. uh three of which you're trying today uh, so the core range features four recurring editions which unite to deliver uh, a clear representation of the house style uh, the range showcases Swedish oak, uh, Swedish smoky flavour, and illustrates the history of Mac Mira through the Brooks Whiskey Edition. Um, with its lower price, Mac by Mac Mira, which we don't have today, uh, we, we basically made that for, for the cocktail uh, mm -hmm. environment, for behind the bar, etc. Yeah. Uh, and, and, uh, and to get the Mac Mira name out there to a much larger audience. It is chill filtered, it is colour corrected, it is 40%. 
Uh, but it is a single malt, uh, and that comes in at about the thirty-four pound mark, I believe, as well. Uh, it, it, it is a really good introduction as well. Mm. Uh, John, did this, could any pot still drink it? Yeah, spice is perfect, right body, but a good yeah. companion. Yeah, no, I've got compressed now. Yeah, I've just sort of more recently been getting into my Irish. Actually, now I've come from being heavily into smoke in in terms of broadly Scotch smoke, and then heavily into um, Scotch sherry. Um, predominantly Oloroso, um, and more recently, I've been sort of getting more into more into my Irish, because um, you know, for when I was drinking sort of alongside the the the, the sherry and the the heavenly smoke, so it, it, it wasn't sort of doing it for me at that particular time. But it's the interesting thing about your palate, isn't it, Mick? I don't know about you, but you kind of go through phases of like I really fancy yes. trying X, um, or you know, you try X, you think, oh, actually, that isn't quite hitting the mark. I'll try Y. Uh, and then you'll you'll find a sort of little niece that you sort of like to sit in. It can vary from day to day, month to month, year to year. Um, but it can. It's why we're all here. I, think, I know, you know it certainly does. I mean, it's like about sense, experimentation. Yeah. Sometimes I've got to spend yak, and I, and I can drink that without any water. Yeah, yeah no problem whatsoever. Other days I'll approach it and have a taste and go, Oof, I need a touch of water in that today. Yeah, yeah. So what we'll do, wanna... do there, guys uh, does anybody need to nip off for a wee uh, a wee comfort break or anything like that uh we'll pop on a wee video i think we've got a wee video i don't no, want to either stop doing that <laughs> no, I don't have a wee video, don't have a wee video. okay lied. do you want me to work out a ukulele and i'll just uh, do a little don't know what i'm doing <laughs> little sing song technology guys technology so Tuesday afternoons, do you know what I mean? Yeah. Um, what I'll do, just, uh, in, in case anybody wants to nip off uh, for a quick comfort break before we start the, the second three drums, basically, uh, I'll take you through a few milestones. Uh, so in 1988, uh, sorry, 1998, 1988, what am I on about? 1998, <laughs> uh, the idea uh, basically resulted uh, in, in the first single uh, Swedish single malt to, to be built. 1999, uh, that's when Macmillan came online. Uh, in 2000, the first 30 litre casks were made uh, and offered to our investors. Uh, 2001, Macmillan decides uh, on two key recipes. In 2001, we decided we we're going to do our elegant recipe and our, our, our smoky recipe, our Ruch recipe, which is we'll, we'll cover on uh, mm. Rams 5 and 6. In 2002, the Macmillan Reserve is a personal 30 litre cask is offered to customers. That's something uh, we'll talk about later on, guys. Um, yeah, Schmergen, some uh, some people have uh, mentioned Schmergen to me before. Yeah, I'm yet to, yet to get on Schmergen. Uh, High Coast, uh, they, they used to be Box uh, and had to rename because of Compass Box, uh, the independent bottler. So that, so Box, Swedish distillery, used to be called, uh, is now called High Coast, I believe. Uh, correct me if I'm wrong. No, I think I'm, I think I'm right. Uh, yeah. 2003, mm -hmm. yeah. thanks guys. <laughs> <laughs> that little, that little, I'll have that little prick up there, like, oh, yeah. yeah. Good boy, it's, good boy, Mickey, have a little drum. Doing it this way, where you can't see the reactions of other people. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Do you know what I mean? So you're, you're trying to vibe off the comments. You're asking the computer. That, it's like, uh, you're not really <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. getting much. Like, yeah, help. <laughs> uh, yeah, so 2003, uh, we opened a new warehouse in, in addition um, in addition to the build that's mine. Uh, I'm... Uh, on the island of, forgive me, guys, Bomb. honestly, the Fjord de Halama in the Stockholm archipelago. That is going to be absolutely wrong. Absolutely <laughs> wrong. Um, in 2004, uh, the Bodice Mine become the main, main warehouse. Uh, 2006, uh, a new warehouse opened uh, on the Hachenberger Castle in Skien. Uh, 2007, a new warehouse opened in Schmergen on the southwest coast of Sweden. So uh, they've got a distillery down there, but we've also got a warehouse in that vicinity. <laughs> uh, 2008, the first non-limited whiskey, uh, the first edition was launched. So uh, our first core range product, basically. So it took just short of nine years to release our first uh, yeah, Feather Islands. Thank you very much, Spirits of the World. You're very helpful. Thank you very much. Mm. I like this. <laughs> uh, uh, Keep so, us on point as well if you try and blag anything. Aye. Are we open for tours in a minute? Yes. Uh, you can go to the Macmira, um Whiskey Village um, uh, and go for a tour. It is currently open. 
Has it reopened? Is that, that, that definite since uh, yes. the older? Uh... Yeah, yeah, because uh, Sweden didn't close down anything, did they? Of course, yeah, yeah. So I think it's more more an issue with sort of travel from wherever you're going from. So yeah, the in, into shouldn't be a problem. It's just I guess yeah, where you're coming yeah. from. Yeah, uh, and yeah, as as, uh, as Mick showed in the. Uh, and the image of the uh, the gravity distillery as well. We do have a sky bar and restaurant right up at the top of the distillery, thirty five yeah. meters up top. Um, so yeah, it's really great views of the sort of forest all around. Uh, but yeah, lovely, lovely setting. You can get yourself over there. Bit of bad Belfast whiskey week there. Yeah, that would have been pretty cool. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So uh, in twenty twenty one. Yeah. So in twenty ten, we we got our second. Uh, core range product basically, and that's that was the Brooks whiskey. Uh, Macmillan's uh, in 2011, Macmillan's uh, second full scale distillery, Gravity, is opened in Garbler. Uh, so that's that's where the, the obviously the Gravity distillery is. Uh, yeah. 2012, Macmillan is awarded European Spirits Producer of the Year by the International uh, Wines and Spirits Company uh, Committee, should I say. Uh, in 2013, the first smoke edition, so Svetz uh, which will be dram number five. Uh, oh, and we opened, and in 2013 as well, we opened uh, a warehouse at Good uh, Bastworth uh, in North oh, Germany. Germany. Yeah, yeah. So we've got a, we, we've got a, uh, we've got a warehouse. I'm losing my words today. This is not good. That's all right, mate. Uh, the whiskey do that. Warehouse. <laughs> we've got a warehouse in Northern Germany as well. Yeah, it's pretty cool. Big, po very popular in Germany. The brand, uh, mm -hmm. might be very popular. So yeah, so we launched Mac in 2015. Uh, and we opened the, the new warehouse in Sky Bar and uh, Loft Southern, the highest whiskey warehouse in Europe. So we've got another Sky Bar. There's, there's a good little section on the warehouse as well, isn't there, on the website? Um, yeah. There's some really nice images as well uh, of, being, of up there as well, yeah. yeah. So obviously last year uh, we celebrated, in December we celebrated 20 years. Uh, this year will be 20, 21 years in December. Uh, so that'll be, that'll be nice and good. Mm. Right then, shall we crack on with drum number four? Is I'm everybody ready. back? Uh, shout if you're not. <laughs> <laughs> Somehow. <laughs> yeah. I can hear you, I promise. Yeah. Ah, dear. Right, so, uh, whiskey number four uh, has come from our moments range. Uh, these tend to be on more expensive uh, range. Uh, this currently come in at about £99 a bottle, uh, but they are quite limited. Um, mm. This one, for example, uh, is... Uh, uh, where's my bottle? Where's my bottle? Uh, only 4,137 bottles uh, of this one. Uh, so, uh, so stored deep in the Bodest mine uh, are thousands of casks mm. which are regularly appraised by our Chief Nosing Officer, Angela. Uh, Mac Miller's master blender as well. Uh, whilst monitoring their progress, she occasionally hits upon exceptional casks, which demand to be bottled either as they are, uh, or in addition, uh, or in addition with a particularly clear vision. Uh, and that's where the moments come in. This is a clear vision. It's obviously not come from a single cask, but it's yeah. come with a clear vision. Uh, the exclusive moment series was created for just these occasions, showcasing Mac Miller's most exclusive casks. Only very limited editions of the series have been produced. Created uh, first in um, 2011, uh, the series has resulted in around 30, 33 unique uh, editions since then. And today, we're, we're happy to bring you the Moment Caribbean. Uh, Caribbean. Uh, yeah, and it's exactly as, as it sounds, guys, you know, Caribbean. Uh, so as you can guess, this has come from uh, rum casks. Uh, so the casks that went to make this up were uh, 350 litre rum casks, uh, 200 litre ex bourbon casks, 128 litre ex oloroso casks, and uh, a single 200 litre cherry wine cask. Believe it or not, how cool is that? Cherry wine. Yeah. Uh, a, li a little bit about the bottle. Um, you'll not see this, guys, um, obviously because you've got the miniatures. But the bottles are oh, actually wow. come with um, a removable. Uh, a removable metal uh, metallic uh, sticker if you're, or plaque uh, that comes with the bottle number uh, and the outrun on it as well uh, and that's held in place with a black rubber band 
The, now, obviously, we mentioned earlier that we're um, quite environmentally friendly, sustainable, etc. The black rubber bands are actually reused um, cycle inner tubes, which I find yeah. quite cool. Uh, and it's got the it's got the eight dimples on the bottom of the bottle, uh, and yeah, and it gives you a wee description as well. So, finished in casks that previously held Barbados on Jamaican rums from plantation. Anybody that's into rum, no plantation are quite a a, a really good. Uh, specialist rum um, producer. Uh, you also get as well is a, a little packet of the barley that went into uh, basically Macamira barley that, that goes into making up, up the whiskey really. Uh, so like I mentioned, uh, I currently have bottle 2254 of 4137. So only just over 4,000 bottles of this were produced. Uh, the numbers are quite low. Yeah. yeah, I've got two two five six mix. So uh, just uh, we don't know who's uh, don't know who's lucky so and so in between. He's, he's, he's in between us, Carl. Who's in between? <laughs> yeah. Probably Lawrence. Yeah, maybe. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah, so Mama Caribbean is an elegant. So it's our elegant uh, single malt recipe. So it's our non peated, uh, partly matured in casks that have previously held uh, plantation Barbados and Jamaican rum, uh, but also been flavoured with whiskey from ex Oloroso and ex Cherry wine casks. Uh, around 75% of the, of the whiskey has been finished in rum casks. Uh, so this results uh, in a spicy, fruity whiskey with warm notes mm. of uh, rum and vanilla oak. Uh, the whiskey from various casks that make at the moment Caribbean are at least eight years old. Okay, uh, uh, Most of them are nearly 12 years old. Uh, matured in the boldest mine, so that's the, the mine that's 50, 50 metres below the ground. Uh, and like I said, it's, it is a limited edition rum. Uh, and once he's gone, once he's gone, guys, that's it. They're, they're gone. Um, we, you know, we don't have the whiskey to reproduce them, basically, because of the casking, etc., that goes into it. Uh, will we do other? Will we do other rum finishes in the future? Aye, more than likely. Uh, but at the minute, can we reproduce Caribbean? No. So once those um, just short of four thousand two hundred bottles go. That's that expression, literally gone, guys. Okay, uh, so this is this bottle in, is included in the twenty percent off deal. Uh, so yeah, so let's get to the important part, shall we? Let's uh, let, let's talk nosing. As you can see, I've, I've poured myself quite a drink. Yeah, that's that's a I, healthy pour. <laughs> yeah, I, as you can get, I, I really quite like this one. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So, uh, so yeah, fruity and spicy and buttery. I do get a bit of a buttery nose with it, uh, mm. with notes of vanilla, toffee, and roasted oak. Uh, every evoking berries, uh, there are aromas of rum, dried fruit, and pear. <laughs> but that, that was the poll for Rook, which is the next one. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Sorry about technical difficulties, gentlemen and ladies. Uh, we're not the most technically savvy of people. <laughs> but there you go. What can you do? So, yeah. So the most important bit. So, Guys, mm. everyone, everyone always speaks to me at, at, at tastings, especially new people. I think, oh, I've been a bit hesitant about getting into whiskey. Uh, I find it too complicated. I said, right, you can make it complicated if you want to. But mainly, yeah, uh, I go, when I smell it, does it make me want to drink it? Mm -hmm. When I taste it, does it make me want to drink more of it? That's as simple as it needs to be. Yeah, it, yeah. it doesn't have to be, or I get all these different mental flavor profiles because flavor profiles are different. Yeah. Uh, everybody's going to get something different with this guys. Yeah. Uh, because flavor profiles are personal. Um, you know, we all have different childhoods. We've all had different adulthoods, etc. Yeah. We've had different foods and experienced different things. Um, I see a higher ABV. Well, it's 46.1%. John, do you know what I mean? It's a, it's a, it's a fair humdinger of, a, of an ABV as it is. It's a, yeah, it's an interesting uh, interesting comment, though, I think, on that one. Because I think it, 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 it's sort of, it's, yeah, it's sort of, we're not, we're not kind of going for that sort of uh, flavour profile. It's not, it's, it is a little bit more delicate, this one. Yeah. I think uh, that molasses. And, and that's the thing, you know, if you don't need to add a touch of water in this, you think it needs to be a higher ABV. That, to me, screams alarm bells. That means this is a dangerously dangerously uh easy drinking jam and at 46.1 percent you know you're going to have a couple of those jams 
and uh, get up to go to the toilet and find out someone stole your legs for you. You know what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> Thank you very much, Jane. Welcome to Belfast Whiskey Club. We like it at higher ABV. You know? <laughs> yeah. Welcome, Brendan, as well. <laughs> Fantastic. Fantastic. Oh, yeah. Welcome, yeah. Brendan. Uh, better late than never, my friend. Um, don't power... Don't power smash your drums. <laughs> you say you don't yeah. or do? I don't. No, don't do that. We're, we're yeah. promoting we're drinking. If you do it, we can't see you, so knock yourself out. Uh, John likes cash strength drums. Yeah, John, you're not the only one. Uh, I'm, mm. I'm ex-Navy. I uh, spent a lot of time down in the Caribbean uh, and did quite a lot of the distillery tours and tastings and stuff like that. Um, absolutely loved it. Fantastic. So, guys, yeah. So, apart from it needing to be a bit of a slightly higher ABV, uh, does anybody have any questions or comments on the moment Caribbean? Got cracking legs on this one. I yeah. One of, when I first cracked this bottle, that was one of the first things I noticed. It. It took ages for the liquid yeah, to get no down the side of the glass. Gone, John, you're not wrong there. Um, and yeah, like I say, again, whether or not I'm sort of being biased because obviously you know you got you, you hear rum you hear sort of you instantly think that kind of that that sugars that you know deep sweet you know, molasses you know you, you, whether or not that sort of my tasting is kind of led by knowing about that sort of influence um or not is is a question mark. but I, I genuinely feel like i can taste that kind of rich um deep sugar do you know what i mean mate yeah no i know exactly what you mean Exactly what you mean. Oh, 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 we're on it as well, actually. When you got your bottle, Mick, how did you uh, get the seal off? Because uh, I thought the seal was pretty tough on this one. Uh, pull and twist at the same time. Pull it, okay. See what I so, it comes up with one. <laughs> see what I did with mine, right? Because <laughs> I was slightly like, because like, so this, if anyone does pick up a full size bottle of this one as well, um, the, the whole recycled, upcycled uh, bike tube. Uh, situation that's around the top as well. So the seal is up around the top there, but it doesn't have your sort of typical kind of pull uh pull tab on um so i was sat there just 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 for probably a bit longer than i should have as an intelligent young man um thinking <laughs> how do i get into this and so i went a bit macgyver on it and uh slid off me uh me label uh this as well is one of the um one of the interesting things about these bottlings as well um the actual sort of labels themselves are kind of collector's items um and as you get more and more whiskies uh in your collection you know having hold of all those different bottles does start to take up a lot a lot of space uh, yes, so part of the does. reason part of the reason around this was uh we get these upcycled in a tube which is great but also you can just keep the uh keep the actual label itself and you've got your your bottle number as well uh, so if you're not too precious about the actual whole bottle itself you can you can take this with it but if you do take this off be wary that these corners are very sharp uh so sharp that if you need to you can slice the seal off the top of your bottle to get into it so <laughs> that's that, my little uh, <laughs> that, do it. that's what i use for it yeah 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 Deep Sugar Brilliant. sounds like a cover band. It is actually, yeah. Um, we mainly play hair metal. Uh... <laughs> <laughs> uh, so yeah, this oh. is the we're currently enjoying the Moment Caribbean. Uh, so it's part of our Moment range. Um, if you were to look at this sort of like a a, a broad kind of like what levels are you going at in terms of Matt this is kind of be like the the level three. Um, one mm. I guess you, you sort of look at. So you've got your core range, uh, which is where the Eck and the Brooks whiskey would sit. We've tried our Grante, and we've got a little bit of the Apple Blanc later, which is our seasonal range. Uh, and then you've got our moments, um, which are sort of broadly in the kind of uh, three to 5,000 um, bottle number range, all individually bottled as well. Yeah. Um, in terms of age, Mick, do we have an exact number on this one? Because I know we don't... Yeah, so minimum, minimum eight years old, up to about 12 years old. Yeah. And here's Paul with some decent dark question mark. Oh, I don't know about deep diving, but here the the Caribbean, uh, the Caribbean uh, finish there was great. Yeah, awesome. Oh, you're gonna have to repeat what he says because I can't hear him. Oh, I was just saying, uh, I, I was saying the Caribbean uh, finish was absolutely brilliant. Yeah, enjoying the finish on a making oh, here right, now. Cool. Yeah, you can't hear Jason or Paul. No, I can't oh, hear Paul okay. for some reason. He's enjoying the finish. It's the gonna, man's happy. Be, He's enjoying the whiskey. It's gonna be the tech my end. This happens yeah. sometimes with the iPad, honestly. The iPad, I think, yeah. Uh, but yeah, th again, this is a, a little step up in terms of price for Mac Mirror. Um, but hopefully, you know, in trying it, you, you get to see sort of that, that there is a little bit more of that kind of age, a little bit more of that complexity in there. Um, like we said, in terms of flavor profile, not something that's going to kind of knock you around uh, no. in terms of big smoke or, you know, big sherry or anything like that. But there is enough 
of that kind of sweetness, um, oiliness uh, to, to kind of challenge your palate and give you something that's a, an interesting experience. But yeah, Definitely. for me, I could stare at this one in the glass for ages because it just takes a while to get down there. Um, so yeah. Lovely awesome. stuff. So any more any more questions uh, about the Caribbean? I tell you what, Mick, I'm doing all right today with my uh, my my pause, my self pause, and my pacing. Uh, I've got my water to hand as well, good. so I don't get Mix too rowdy. Thing. Remember, water's good for you. Mm. Stay hydrated. But yeah, for anyone who's uh, sort of out there and uh, hasn't had the privilege of uh, me on a stream before, um, when I drink quite a lot of alcohol in a concentrated period of time, I do get a little bit of the old uh, flush. So it normally looks like I'm looking right now. It's a bit <laughs> yeah. warm. So I, I, it's quite warm up here today, so I managed to. Uh, oh, I, but I had to close the window so we didn't get external noises and things like that. Yeah, yeah. So it's a bit warm in the front room at the moment. Yeah, no, that's my excuse. I'm sticking to it. <laughs> <laughs> so next up, guys, we're going to jump back to a uh, a core range bottling, uh, and it's going to be our first smoky whiskey uh, of the afternoon. Okay, mm -hmm. uh, and we're going to get Carl to take you through that, uh, and he'll explain about our smoking process and things like that as well. Okay. So yeah. yeah, cheers, man. So yeah, this is our Spence the Rook. Um, again, if you want to uh, bang in the comments, what do you think Spence the Rook stands for? Um, this is, again, part of our, our core range bottlings. It is your bottle number two, I believe. Uh, but we've decided to put it on as number five. And hopefully when you get a little nose on it, you can kind of see our, our logic in terms of why we've, uh, why we've done that. So do myself a little pour there. Carl, I'm going to get you to tell him about the story and stuff like that, about it while I quickly just dive off and put the offer up. Uh, okay, yeah, yeah, that's fine. No bit, worries. Okay. That's no worries. Thanks for giving me a heads up and not just disappearing. Yeah, <laughs> I thought it was polite, you know? <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's yeah. cool. Uh, yeah, so Svensl Rook, any, uh, any guesses on what Svensl Rook means? Answers on a postcard or in a chat. Uh, so while you're doing that, uh, so, yeah, so this is one of our, essentially, our four building blocks of uh, flavor profiles um, in terms of casking. Uh, interesting go. Interesting. Uh, not Swedish mud. Um, so, yeah, so we've obviously got our Swedish oak. We've got our elegant. Uh, we've got innovative finish. And then we've also got this one, uh, which I'll tell you now. Svensk stands for literally Swedish smoke. Um, I think one of the, Alex, one of the other brand representatives, when he's sort of linking it in terms of... Uh, Etymology, uh, Rook, I think Rook, uh, Rauk is German for smoke, Rauken. Um, so that's kind of the through line in it there. But yeah, Svens Rook, Swedish smoke, literally that. Uh, and again, this is another one of our pillars um, in terms of flavor profile, our smoky profile uh, whiskey. Uh, we're on the, one of the one of only nine distilleries uh, in the world, correct me if I'm wrong on that one, uh, to still do our own uh, smoke, multi smoke barley on, on site. Um, our current smoker, uh, is actually a repurposed shipping container as well. So if you do find yourself up uh, in Yervla, uh, up near the distillery, our smoke is literally right there on site. Um, so, <laughs> so, <laughs> Swedish wood, yeah. Um, so yeah, so li literally it's right there on site, um, a, a repurposed shipping container, and that's what we used to do our smoking. Uh, and that's actually a, a sort of big upgrade from what we originally had because quite early in the process, quite early with us um, being quite a young distiller, we knew we wanted to have a bash um at smoky whiskey um and in terms of experimentation bear in mind sort of in the early 2000s we were still a very very small company um so you know to the extent where our original first smoker um was actually um uh, in the bottom of someone's garden and they had to put it in the bottom of someone's garden because obviously the smell itself would sort of irk the neighbors somewhat um but yeah very very small capacity uh, but it kind of gave us an idea of what we wanted to do with it um, but yeah, the current one at the Gravity Distillery, repurposed shipping container. Uh, we have a fella called Hurkan, uh, who is our smoke master. Um, it's quite an intensive, labor intensive process uh, to do the smoking of the barley. Takes around 36, <laughs> takes around 36, uh, sorry, thank you, Swedish chef there. Um, takes around 36 hours to do the whole smoking process, and it needs constant maintenance um, uh, in there as well. So the, the, mal the, the malted barley is fed in through the top, uh, and then the, the uh, while smoking, it's constantly turned, uh, constantly adding new peat uh, to the burner just outside of it as well. Um, so, 
so yeah, so uh, yeah, again, Preludium number six was my guess. So if you're not familiar with the Preludium range, basically we had, um, I think Preludium two as well, uh, Spirits of the Wood, was our uh, forerunner to Svens Eck as well. Uh, so the Preludium range was essentially a, a series of our um, limited edition releases um, way back, I think, around sort of 2007, 2008. Um, very, very popular, very, very hard to get hold of um, as well um, back into the end of the time. Bearing in mind, sort of due to the licensing laws, it's actually quite tricky. Um, you can only buy it from certain places. Um, so you'd have queues around the block, you know, like you do for gigs uh, when people really want to get to the front, um, the front of the uh, front of the stage. Um, it was that sort of level of hype and excitement for the, each of the different Palladium range um, to get into it. Um, by our own admission, it was very young whiskey. Um, so I think, from sort of from my personal standpoint, I think it's it's kind of common common standpoint is that our stuff nowadays is is better than what it was then because we're still kind of finding our feet. But uh, the whiskey as it was then was fundamental to kind of give us the building blocks uh, for where we're at now. Uh, so yeah, so Svens Brook as it is now. Um, 36 year, 36 hours in terms of the smoking process. Um, the peat we actually get in as well. Uh, we, in terms of the environmental impact, we actually only use sort of a truckload is about enough um, to do us for an entire season, to do us for a year. Um, so we don't actually use a lot, a lot of peat for anyone sort of concerned from an environmental point of view, uh, digging up uh, a load of peat. Uh, and we actually add as well for the Swedish twist, um, uh, Swedish juniper. Uh, to the actual smoking process. So you get the cold, you get the peak nice and hot, uh, and when it's got a real nice glow to it, that's when Hukan adds uh, adds the juniper uh, to the mix. Um, the juniper comes from uh, maintained power lines. So it, again, it's not us going and chopping down trees or leaves and branches um, willy-nilly just for the sake of, of making whiskey. Um, it's actually a necessary process. So when the juniper grows over the power lines, from a safety point of view, it needs to be cut down. But rather than that just being burnt off anyway uh, and nothing used with it, we actually use that as part of our smoking process. And it's again, it's not just a gimmick as well. Um, the juniper uh, twigs are very high in oil um, and they've got a lot of that kind of moisture here in the wood. So when you've got that, that high sort of moisture content, that high oil content, um, it imparts a unique flavor during the smoking process. Um, gives you sort of like a, this kind of dense balsamic kind of smoke. Um, yeah, so hopefully you'll get sort of some of that through uh, when we actually get sort of through to the taste of it. Um, but yeah, bottled at 46.1, magic number uh, for us. In terms of caskings, you've got American oak in play there, Swedish oak, uh, and then you've got ex-bourbon oloroso saturated casks in there as well. So on the nose, uh, again, from a nosing point of view, you should sort of straight away get it slightly different. Uh, I say slightly different. Uh, different to the other ones you've tried already. Slightly smoky, spicy. The peat comes through a little bit more uh, towards the back end of it, I think. You get a little of that balsamic juniper in there as well. Um, caramel and a touch of anise as well. On the palate, smoke straight away. Peat comes through, dry oak, a little touch of tobacco, salt, and then a touch of fresh green fruit uh, at the end. Uh, and again, like I mentioned earlier, uh, I, I'm a big fan of sort of smoky whiskies. And for me, this is an interesting one that's it gives me a different experience for smoky whiskey, uh, I think. Um, and then on the finish, dry, that becomes slightly drier. Uh, smoky, you get a little bit of salt and a little bit of herbs um, as well on the finish. But yeah, bottled at 46.1. Uh, for this one, it is a 50 CL bottle in terms of the full size. Um, and I believe that was on the basis of um, Mickey, help me out here. 50 CL. Was that cost? It wasn't a cost, just a costing exercise, was it? It was... Um... Yeah, because it's, it's fairly small batch because obviously of our own floor maltings, we can only produce a certain amount of it. Uh, mm. So to allow more people to enjoy it uh, and cost as well because obviously there's extra cost involved yeah. with um, with floor malt and our own process, smoked barley, yeah, the extra yeah. time that goes into smoking the barley, etc., it costs more. So to keep the price point accessible, um, yeah, that that's why it's in the fifty seal bottle. Yeah. So yeah, be interested to hear, hear what you guys think uh, of this one. Uh, your comments on this one. Uh, hopefully, you're getting this is is very different. Uh, the small drink Swedish whisk, uh, the more drink the Swedish language start to make more sense. Yeah, I can I see that. Could through. not agree yeah. more with that. Yeah, honestly, could not agree more with that. Yeah, 
But hopefully when tasting it, you can see why we've sort of flipped this one into five rather than two. Um, just because it's sort of building up through the profile um, in terms of where the flavor is going from there. And this is one that's um, when we'd like to say when we do shows and we, we, we're, we're talking to sort of people who haven't tried Swedish whiskey or Swedish smoke before. Uh, it's always one that gets people's interest. Um, nice amount of peat, not overbearing, lovely sweet edge, a hint of key lime pie. Maybe that slightly tart, that slightly kind of tart, sort of slightly citrusy kind of note. Yeah. And that's the interesting thing for me as well about the smoke kick. I think it's definitely there. It's definitely prevalent. But I think um, in terms of other smoky whiskies, you know, the your typical Islas, and obviously that doesn't sort of narrow it down in terms of how broad Isla can be. Um, but I do think it's it's something that sort of sits in its own little unique kind of niche for what it's bringing to the smoky party. Uh, it's one I found that people who don't necessarily drink smoky whiskies, they can approach it a little bit easier. <laughs> Just showing off now, mate. <laughs> <laughs> or Google Translate your friend, not sure. <laughs> yeah, I've not got a clue what that even remotely means. Shall we Google it just in case the uh, spirits of the wood ain't you, mugging us off? You go for it. I'd probably <laughs> no, swore right. us or something. I'm, I'm okay with that. I'm okay with <laughs> <Yeah>. that. <laughs> Monkey, Monkey nuts. No, that's, quite indif- that's quite different. Different to a Jewish superstition. Very interesting. Yeah, it is quite different. Um, I think the monkey nuts might be like, like that vegetal note that you get from juniper. So if you're not a big fan mm. of juniper or you've not really had a lot to do with juniper, then maybe monkey nuts speaks in that way. Oily, yeah. Yeah, definitely. But yeah, good stuff. We've got, we got the pole up for this one as well. We've had the uh, pole on the rook. Yeah. Bam. There we go. I'm voting as well because it popped up on my screen. Oh, so yeah, definitely, well. yeah. Yeah, it tends to be a mixed bag with a little bit of, uh, a little bit of smoke. So I think we've got some it like does. in I mean, it. Some smoky whiskeys, you know, you, know, you yeah. get people that enjoy smoky whiskeys that will like non-smoky whiskeys, but people that don't enjoy a smoky whiskey, um, yeah, that's it. It's, it's pretty much like, uh, I don't know, um, what's the word I'm looking for, Cole? Uh, subjective? Yeah, yeah, but that's not the word I was looking for. Okay. Um, never smelled monkey nuts. You need to go to the zoo more often. <laughs> never smelled <though>. monkey nuts. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, you walk right into that one. Mate. Marmite. That's the word I was looking for. It's more It's, it's more like, uh, so peated whiskey is like Marmite, basically. You have a lot okay, of yeah, 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 yeah. I, uh, for I'm the record, I love Marmite. I to love uh, peated whiskey. Uh, it was never my standout most favourite. Uh, yeah. I, I grew to love it. Then again, my introduction to peated whiskey was at a Freud 10. Uh, okay. So yeah. yes, that was a pretty pretty big smash. Not messing about, yeah, yeah. Yeah, no, I love Lafroig, so yeah, it's a... But it's a good baptism, that. that's, that's straight, and that can make or break it for a lot of people, can't yeah. it? Because you, you do find as well that a lot of people, when, I, when I'm just talking to them, they, don't, they, they say, oh, I don't drink whiskey, full stop. You know, they, they, they say they're... You know, I'm drinking with a, a partner or something like that who does, and they don't like. Oh, oh the, I had a bad experience when I was younger. Do you know what I mean? Whether or not it's with the, a whiskey that's, um, it's maybe let's say potentially of a lower quality, or you know, it's not quite got as much complexity to it, or it's, it's sort of aggressively high in the alcohol level. You know, I think it's a shame sometimes that that sort of like a really early experience with whiskey can put people off from it and sort of not give them the chance to kind of re-explore. Um, you know, it's it's not about that you don't like whiskey. It's just I say anyway that you haven't found the right one, um, personally anyway. So guys, there's um, the the twenty percent up code is there, uh, and that's nice that's twenty percent off the the bottles on the tasting, not for the whole store. <laughs> so we'll get that change. But uh, the, the 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 link should automatically apply uh, if it doesn't. Um, yeah. then the code, the discount code is Belfast Mac, all in capitals, guys. Okay, yeah. and that gives us 20 that gives you 20% off anything that we've had on today's tasting. Okay, and we might be able to sneak in the Apple Blom in there as well since you've got it in your pack. Yeah, the Apple yeah. Blom I mean, might not be live I, yeah, the um, at the moment, though. So, <clears throat> yeah, I'll uh, I'll drop a match out, mate. Uh-huh, yeah, I'll yeah, do that. so yeah, so that's the Spencer Rook. Um, so that's sort of the, the start, I guess, of our. 
our Swedish smoke journey again part of our core range so one of our four bottles in the core range I've probably got actually I can show you the um, if you are interested in trying um, our core range a uh, little bit salesman a little bit handy to know um, we do a tasting pack across our core um, so we've tried like I say the Brooks whiskey today in the sense Oak in the sense Rook uh, so if you are tempted by trying a little bit of the uh, Mac as well uh, you can get it together 2390 I think it is for that pack together mm-hmm. um, but yeah, it's worth worth yeah. getting if you sort of just want to try it out, or if you want to maybe get other people to give it a little bash as well. Um, but yeah, definitely get on the get on that code. Um, we like to do those kind of codes because whenever we do sort of tastings, it's like we'll generally have people's like, uh, oh, I like that one, and I quite like that one. Oh, I'm not sure which one I want to get. So we go, yeah. all right, sod it, use the code, <laughs> get them both, exactly. treat yourself. <laughs> Exactly. So no. So that you're that, probably that, saving your money on commuting anyway at the moment, or you know buying that extra coffee every cup of every day. So uh, <laughs> might as well put it into whiskey. So but yeah, mate. Spence, onto the, uh, the Spence Gluck comes in at forty six pound, guys, as well. Okay. Yeah. Happy days. So, Sorry, Mick, Cole. Do you want to interrupt? Take you. Us I apologize, my friend. No, it's fine. No, no, go for it. I was going to say, do you want to take us through the uh, Spence Gluck American Keck? I will do. So. Exactly like Carl said, Svensk Ruch Amerikansk Ech. Um, basically, anybody going to have a rough <laughs> idea what that means? <laughs> it, you know the we, first we've part, covered, surely, hopefully. We, we've covered most of the words in it. Yeah. And if you don't know what Amerikansk Ech uh, or Amerikansk is, then um, yeah. <laughs> yeah, there you go, guys. There's, there's, the, uh, there's the discount up there now. 20% off any bottle in today's tasting in the Mac Mirror store. <laughs> you know. America sucks. You know. we're, not get, we're not getting into that. We're not getting into politics. It's only, <laughs> only love on the stream today, here, guys. Do that. Good whiskey Sweet and love. love. America sucks. Yeah, okay, cool. <laughs> Coffee, pa. Okay. Just in case no, anyone's, no. you know, Spence when people Ruth. are, I'm just thinking normal world when everyone's commuting to work, you know, you got your money on bus pass, trains, all the rest of it, and then you get a Starbucks or a, you know, or a, Costa or whatever it is, it all adds up, doesn't it? Certainly does. So stop doing that for two, three weeks, and suddenly you've got enough to buy a bottle of whiskey. Job done. Happy day. It's much better. You see money. So guys, Svensk Gruch Amerikansk. Yes. Um, yeah. So we covered what Svensk Gruch is. So Swedish smoke, Trump oak. Close. <laughs> Close. Uh, Amerikansk ek is American oak. So the only casks we used for this were virgin american oak casks uh we actually get our casks from the blue glass Distil- uh, blue grass distillery uh in america that's where we get our uh, american oak yep. from uh virgin and um ex bourbon as well and if anybody knows that's where they get the jack that jack daniels get their barrels from as well uh, get their casks from so i'm really into- so one of the biggest things really um for us is the way our new make does interact with uh, our smoky new make at that does interact quite well with that sweetness that you get from uh, American oak really mm. uh, so the flavor of the uh, of the smoke in Svensk Ruch, uh, is inspired by the old tradition uh, that like Carl said yeah uh, of preserving food by infusing it with juniper smoke uh, as you see though I've got a, a fairly healthy jam on this one Carl as well yeah, that's all right, mate. No good for on this one. And I put this in my <laughs> special drink can as well. Fake oak. <laughs> well, it's it's the most oak that's used, John. So uh, yes, this is yeah, this is a <laughs> exclusively matured in uh, MDF. <laughs> <laughs> so, so MDF and laminated floorboards. Yeah. OSB just to change it up a wee bit. Yeah, yeah. I tell you what, I w- no, no. <laughs> <laughs> mm, it tastes like glue and wood shavings. Yes. <laughs> Well, all good whiskey shirt. <laughs> Smoky butter. Okay, nice one, Brenda. Nice yeah. one. Uh, so, yeah, so uh, in this second and limited edition of Svensk Ruch, uh, we have aged our smoky recipe exclusively in new casks of American oak. So, we've not had bourbon in them before, guys. Uh, it's literally just virgin American oak. Mm. So, this gives the whiskey prominent notes of vanilla and herbs. Uh, a welcome contrast to the bold notes of peat, juniper, and tar. So I don't think we quite covered the tar tasting note on Svensk Gluck, did we really? Because really, I, I don't really get tar. Um, tar? Yeah. No, yeah. I, so I, I get, don't get so, it myself. I think, uh, yeah, I guess the, you know, when we're talking about the juniper and that kind of balsamic, mm. um, sort mm. of oily, 
kind of dense flavor. I think that's probably, probably tying in the tar. Just that, that first mouthful on that, after, especially just that, it's that mm. next step up from the rook. Do you know what I mean? It's got that better mm. mouthfeel, personally speaking. Um, it's got a bit of a bigger hit. Now, they're both the same ABV. So, Svensk Ruk is 46.1. Mm -hmm. And the Svensk Ruk Merchenech is 46.1 also. But it feels that bit stronger. Yeah. yeah. It's got a bit more of that, that punch to it. Do you know what I mean? Uh, and I, I think that just comes from it being from the Virgin American Oak. And, you you, you know, it's had a bit longer. Uh, so, this is done a bit longer in the casks. Mm. Uh, because, obviously, the 200-litre casks, then the... Than the 30 litre Swedish oak casks or whatever, do you know what I mean, Carl? Mm. So I think it's, uh, yeah, it's just, it's had that bit longer and it's just taken on a bit of a, a bit of a bigger, bit of a bigger punch, which I think, is, yeah, I really quite enjoy it. I think uh, the, the new oak sort of, um, the new oak is sort of, it's got more oil to give, um, I think. So I think you, you, for me, I get sort of a little bit more of that kind of slow, slow yes. releasing oil flavor in there. Definitely more sugars in there. So yeah, wood sugar bomb. Yeah. yeah, but with with uh, it, that is quite basic because you, obviously you've got the the, the depth uh, of the the smoke coming through as well there, John. You know, <laughs> so let me know what you meant, mate. It's fine. Mm. Yeah, I think I think it's an interest again, an interesting kind of experiment, to sort of to put it into new oak to, to kind of give you that. We know we wanted to take. We know we wanted to still keep that smoky element in there. Yes. That smoky aspect, that deep sweet smoke. Uh, but then just ramp that up a little bit more with some new, new wood, basically. Yeah. And, uh, and, see what that does. I think obviously, Carl touched on. Um, we only use uh, like thirty percent of our smoky recipe in in yeah. our in our Svensk uh, I think we dialed this up a little bit as well, not by too much though. Yeah. I think it's going up to like 40 percent. Uh, smoky yeah. recipe in with the elegant recipe to, to make it too elegant, yeah. <coughs> uh, yeah. And for uh, just purely from a sort of a, a geeky notes point of view, I think uh, our phenols, our smoky uh, recipe comes out around 60, aren't we? Uh, 60 ppm, we are, yeah. Mate, yeah, yeah. So that's obviously that's so that's obviously before that's pre distillation, uh, where pretty much everybody else takes their uh, takes their ppm count yeah. from as well. And obviously, then for, for Rook. We only use thirty percent of that, and for this, I think we've got up to thirty-five-ish yeah. yeah. percent. Uh, so we're only playing around about the third of the actual recipe is smoky. Yeah, uh, we don't take a uh, a, a post-production uh, ppm count, uh, but for yeah. any uh, any peak geeks out there, our uh, our ppm count uh, after smoking is sixty ppm. So that 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 puts us above the the, the likes of your your Lagavulins and your the Freuds, etc. That puts us up quite high. Yeah. Yeah the elegant does uh the does sort of it still gives you the favour but it helps it kind of dial it down a bit, I think. Yeah. Definitely. I think it just helps smooth it out a bit. Yeah. Uh, so yeah so, part of our go on. So on the nose guys, uh obviously smoke. Get the spiciness of the oak, fruits and herbs. Uh, notes of peat, juniper, toasted oak, and vanilla, followed by a smoky and spicy aroma with saltiness, minerals, tobacco, tobacco leaves, light tariness, arak treats, pear fudge, ginger, and vanilla. What are so, guys? Um, the the way I've been doing the taste notes is I'll read them off the official tasting notes bit. Uh, yeah. To give you the corporate line, I'm not one for that in general. Uh, I'm mm -hmm. more of a, like I explained earlier. Does it smell good? When I smell it, does it make me want to drink it? When I drink it, does it make me want to drink more? This ticks those boxes for me 100% without question or doubt. Um, I'm a I'm a PP fan. No, John, the, the PPM won't come across as 60% yeah. because we only use a percentage of uh, peated mm -hmm. liquid uh, or peated barley, should I say. Roughly uh, a third. Yeah. With, with, uh, yeah, so roughly a third of our peated barley mixed in with two thirds of our non peated barley to, to make our smoky expression. Uh, so, does anybody know what Harak treats are? A R R A K. Carl, you got any clue? Uh, I've got Scooby Doo. No. Spirits I think of the World? I have to look that one up. Uh, so, Spirits of the World, yes, yes. I, I thought Spirits of the World might know. Uh, come on, Emily, let's. Um, what, what is an Arak treat? Please. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's so forceful. <laughs> yeah. No, but genuinely, I, yeah, I, I'm, I'm curious. I don't know if it's. Uh... I want to know. 
It's a Scandi, this, this, like a I, I should look into these things. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. But... Unless it's a regional thing, yeah, potentially. Yeah. Because the spirits of the world did mention he was, he was Swedish. Oh well, that that will yeah. that will certainly help. A spirit situation. from Indonesia. Interesting. All right, the spirit from Indonesia. All right, cool. <laughs> Hopefully you didn't take your laptop with you, John. Um, or if you did, then fair enough. You don't want to miss a moment. That's all good. <laughs> so on the on the palette, we should be getting peat, juniper, salt. I definitely get that salty flavour coming through. Mm -hmm. uh, defin definitively more smoky than what was on the nose is implying. Yeah. So where is Ruch is the other way around. It smells smoker in the nose and doesn't quite mm -hmm. follow through as much on the palate. Uh, I, I think the the Svenskurich American Ek is the other way around. Uh, so John's had enough of the Arach in the Middle East. No stories of John. Come on, mm. don't be like that. Don't be like that. Uh, so it's used mm. in a lot of sweets and pastries in Sweden. Oh, awesome! So that would be what Arach treats are then. All right, cool, fantastic. Spirits yeah. of the world, you have been fantastic again. Thank you. Uh, um, so a pleasant oaky spiciness with vanilla, toasted oak, pickled figs. So. Middle Eastern again. Uh, and pear fudge. Pear fudge. Hmm. That's an interesting. So, so pear, pear is one of the kind of common notes you hear across yeah, when we're talking about the mountain range. Pear, pear is there. Pear the fudge, fudge, I guess, the new American oak, maybe the sweetness from the. Oh, no, the for sure, American but oak. I've never had a pear fudge, so I wouldn't oh, okay. yeah, yeah, necessarily yeah. put those together in the same word, if yeah. you know what I mean. Yeah, I see what you mean. Uh, so the texture is medium thick with oaky chewy notes. Yeah, I, I agree with I the that. majority of the, the, those tasting notes for the, for, for the mm. palate. Okay, cool. Yeah, at this point, we're just uh, learning yeah, bits I'm, about I'm Indonesian. Learning. I'm, I'm learning. Do you know what I mean? <laughs> yeah. Like, I know we're supposed uh, to be teaching to a certain degree, but I'm also about learning. Indonesian like, <laughs> this is how tasting should be, guys. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. It's definitely oh, absolutely. a two-way exchange or a three-way exchange of information. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? So, uh, so on the finish, uh, spicy, smoky, and oaky with notes of tar, tobacco leaves, bright notes of pickled figs, and again, the pear fudge. So does anybody disagree with the actual official tasting notes? And it's okay to do so, by the way, because, yeah. you know, as, as we know, tasting notes are subjective. subjective. <laughs> Quarter to four, it's not a bad time for an afternoon nap, to be fair. I have to have a few nice drums. I'm, I'm, I'm fully subscribed to that behavior, John. Yeah, no, I rate it. Definitely. Mm. it's like napping something you do you know when you're young you're very young you have an afternoon nap and then you get a phase where you, you, know, you just want to be waking out and everything all the time I mean in that stage where do you know what I fancy an afternoon nap I'm going to treat myself Go, we're going back in time again Carl we're going back in time yeah yeah yeah, yeah. <laughs> no definitely I like it I like it so uh, that, that, that brings us to the end uh, of of our six drums uh, you do have three other drums uh, in, in your pack. Uh, uh, uh. Shall we do a little... Uh, we've got a little bit of time, haven't we? Shall we oh, do we've a got little on the apple one? Carl, you hear me okay? I can hear you. Good. And listen, I just want to say a couple of quick things. Yes, do the apple bomb. Yes, look, look, look they're yeah. there to be done. Look, at the end of the day, they're there for everyone's entertainment and uh, expression. But you guys have been good. You guys have been good fun. So apple bomb is number is number eight or number yeah. 18. Okay, it's number eight or number 18. And um, yeah, t t t t tell, me, tell me this, Mickey and Carl. Have you enjoyed yourselves there? That's been fantastic. Of course, mate. mate. Of course. Thank you for having us. Got Good. a couple of regulars in the comments there to keep conversation going, which is really, really enjoyable, by the way. Because Good. obviously, normally when we do this, as you guys will know, being part of whiskey clubs and all that sort of stuff, the, the ambassador stands in front of you and you get a good bit of two-way going as you do the testing. Yeah. Uh, you can read people's faces uh, and all that sort of good stuff. Do you know what I mean? Uh, and so you can sort of tailor your, tailor your flow to that. But when you don't mm. have a sea of faces or even just a couple of faces in front of you, uh, giving yeah. you those reactions back. It's a bit of a strange one to know 
where to pitch something, like where to shut up on yeah. something. Yeah. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. It's, it's, it's Should I stop bit... talking? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You, you, drink? yeah. You, you, two, you two really worked well off each other. I was, at the time, I was thinking, should I come back? And I was like, I don't need to come back. I'm going to sit here and enjoy the whiskey and sit <laughs> there and listen to what's going on because I don't think I was needed. You know, some 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 of the guys and some of the the, the distilleries they need someone to bounce yeah. off for conversation yeah, yeah. stuff. There's, you guys there's, actually, you were answering the questions from the from the gallery really well. I really appreciated it. What I would say, I'm gonna I'm gonna really say some positives about Macmar. This is for, for me, from the whiskey club's point of view in Belfast. We've had I don't know five to maybe ten different expressions of Macmar over the past couple of years. You know. Yeah. It's important. I always think it's important that people drink and try and taste lots of different whiskey from across mm -hmm. the world. We certainly love to, you know, to 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 um, to, to to bring people uh, whiskey from everywhere. So the Swedish whiskey, I remember getting my first bottle of Macmar. I was on a Stena Line boat from Belfast to um, from Belfast to Kinryan, and um, they were doing a sale of uh, whiskeys uh, and all of the stuff. The, the boat was getting scrapped, and we're getting a new boat. Yeah. Okay. And um, I got a bottle of Macmar for uh, I think it was like less than twenty quid. You know, the nice. first, remember the first edition? Yeah. You know, the first edition. You know. Okay. The, yeah. 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 Even a really weird plastic packaging. Yeah. Um. Yeah. So back, it, yeah. you know, I loved it. You know, and I've and I've really liked every expression since. So I've, I've really enjoyed them. These expressions we went today, the core range stuff that you've just gone through. Yeah. Is great. It, you know, it's really good. And I think a lot of people think Swedish whiskey. Nah, don't, don't, yeah, it's not Scotch, it's not Irish. Yeah, yeah. It's got pedigree now. I mean, what are we at? 20 years old? 21 yeah. in December, mate. You know, we've, yeah. we've, we've got pedigree now. We've got lots of whiskey, which is aged whiskey, even though you don't go for aged whiskey mm -hmm. treatment. You know, you've got whiskey there that you can play around with. You've been, you know, manipulating the barrels are absolutely brilliant. Uh, rum finishing. Rum finishing. Yeah. Yes. Um, absolutely great. But you've got your unique style. It's a unique whiskey yeah. taste. It's not Scotch. It's not Irish. This is Swedish whiskey. This is what it's about. And I actually think, and maybe my question was a wee bit, you know, it's a wee bit playful earlier. I said, would you put this in, in front of the either? I don't think it has to be. I think there are different categories in some respect. And, um, yeah, yeah. And, and they should be held with the same types of, uh, you know, uh, esteem, you know, because, you, you know, as a country for 20 years producing whiskey, come on. Yeah, you know, yeah. We, we were the first as well, so we sort of had to establish the way Swedish whiskey was going to be done. Do you know what I mean? And don't get me wrong, uh, Schmergen uh, in High Coast and some mm. of the other, some of the lesser known uh, yeah. Swedish Oak, distillers, there, yeah, uh, you know, they're, they're, they're paving their, their own ways as well. But that was, you know, off. I don't want to speak bad about anything. I don't, I don't like doing that. But you know, they're paving their way for themselves. But it was certainly off the back of us. You yeah. know, we, we lead a lot of the way in, in the way to do things, really. Uh, and it's nice not being shackled by somebody like, you know, like Scotch is shackled by the SWA. Uh, yeah. Whereas, you know, if, if we were, then we never would have had green tea. You know, the grand yeah. tea. That yeah. never would have been a thing. You know, the apple blom, which we'll speak about in a moment, you know, mm. uh, using Calvados cask. Now, Calvados's cask has just been approved by the SWA, but that was only the back end of last year. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? So there's some things like that that we can do. You know, things like Lingonberry, uh, cherry wine casks, all those cherry sort wine, of yeah, things, definitely. you know, uh, that, that we've done for our, our seasonals uh, and our, our moments ranges. Yeah. Just just phenomenal, really. And it's it's exciting for people like myself and for Carl to to be able to go, I stand by this. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, okay. Yeah. 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 You know, yeah. You've got your 200-year-old your Irish distilleries, your 200-year-old Scottish distilleries. Great, brilliant, well done, guys. Do you know what I mean? You, you know, we we tend to try and stick to those sort of um, production techniques when it comes to you know like warehousing and um, production, etc. But you know where we really come into our own, I think, where we can not necessarily outdo uh, Scotch and Irish and maybe some other places uh, is the way we what we can do with cask finishing, basically. Do you yeah. know what I mean, we can certainly put that extra spin on things. Yes. Here, I'm, I'm, look, the three that I put into the box, the last one we put in, so the one you're about to drink there is the apple blom, and here, it, it, it is just, I've had it, I just think it's phenomenal, which yeah. is why I put it in there. Um, I'm a massive fan. I, I put in the lead in because it was one of the, you know, one of those other prestigious kind of releases, yeah. you know, and again, you know, it was a wee bit, it was a wee bit different, but the apple blom, it's such a, such a unique, 
um, taste. <laughs> the, uh, and the final yeah. one I've put in there, the Caden Head one, for everyone, we, we tasted it at our, um, at our club recently, and it, it scored really highly. And I just thought, if I can share this with as many people around the world as possible, I will do. Yeah. I think that yeah. I think that it's, uh, it says a lot when Caden Heads, and I, let's put this in perspective, it says a lot when Caden Heads comes to a distillery and takes the liquid from them. Correct. They don't do that. Yeah. They don't do that just because it's for crack. They nope. do it because they, they appreciate the liquid and that they are they are going to stand by it. So yeah, I know they, you're they, they, stand they, by they, it as brand ambassadors. Well, that's because you're paid to do that, and that, that's important. But the but guys they, at Caden Head have reputations, you know, of, the, of their own branding, and for them to put that in there, I suppose it's similar for 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 me introducing you guys to Belfast Whiskey Week and Belfast Whiskey Club is and and these people is because I I, I believe in you. I believe in the product. I believe in the whiskey. Yeah. I'm very, very grateful for you guys to want to be involved. I know you're involved later on in the week in the introduction to World Whiskey and we yeah. get a chance to, to to talk again. But um, listen, I'm gen- look, I'm generally humbled by the fact you came and you wanted to be part of this festival. I really do mean that. Absolute pleasure. This is not a number one market for you. Um, and, 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 and even if you start to introduce yourselves into Ireland uh, and into Northern Ireland, that's great. I really, I would appreciate that. But I think you can tell by the fact we sold out very quickly of your pack. Yeah, yeah. We're literally everywhere. We've had some great people coming in and having a chat today. Hundred percent. Yeah. It, people want to try it, and people are yeah. enjoying it. I mean, um, okay. So listen, lads. Thank you very much. Pleasure. Yeah, our, genuinely. Honestly, Paul, our actually pleasure has been an absolute cracking afternoon. Absolute pleasure. Uh, yeah. If, if I wasn't doing this, I'd probably be off out shopping with the missus or something, doing something. Like <laughs> yeah. the morning. Do you know what yeah. I mean? Uh, so no. So thanks for the invite. We really do appreciate you being here and being able to spread the uh, the yeah. Macmillan love as the Macmillan love, as it were. Um, yeah. So I was, gonna, I was, we'll, I was just going to say, I, I I managed to take my uh, camper van over to. Northern Ireland and, and Southern Ireland last year. Um, and I absolutely loved every second being over there. So uh, I've seen him on the comments. Hope to meet you next year at the actual event. So, uh, yeah, more, if you can get us over there, you know, uh, bang on our bosses Definitely. there. I'd happily I'm available. in a heartbeat right, come I'm over. Available. I think, I think look, look, Belfast Whiskey Week is a festival where we want people to come to Belfast. We want people to yeah. come to Belfast. And we, we want to do that. Next year, we're going to have a hybrid system. We're going to have the physical here but we're also we know this we know this online version of a festival works we're going to keep that going yeah. somehow but i do think it's important to get yourselves over you know you're across the water it takes you a couple of hours to get here yeah. let's get you into belfast yeah. but you know it's having you know having crack having some you know some whiskeys you know enjoying it seeing people face to face because those reactions are great yeah they are important and we everybody wants to be in those situations where we can all interact and be sociable uh, so yeah. we want that so yeah, I would hundred percent be looking forward to that. I really would be. And um, yeah, listen, lads, we're gonna have a wee bit. I would say to the admins here, a wee bit of music after this. We've got another uh, distillery come on after yourselves. Uh, yeah. but listen, like, honestly, thank you very much. And I hope, listen, I hope. Uh, yeah, I think the apple bomb. I can see from your face, Carl, you've got something to say about it. Well, no, if you, we, if you want, if we, you want to wrap it up there, if you're off of time, honestly, we can wrap it up. That's absolutely no, fine. Right. You've, got, you've got two minutes. Go ahead. You've got something yeah. to say about it. Go ahead. Good. Uh, yeah, so, go on, Mick, you've, you've talked about this quite recently, mate. So if you want to give your, yeah. your abbreviate, uh, brief spiel on this one, uh, on the uh, old Calvados side of things, but yeah. So uh, we worked with uh, Christian Duan uh, in, in France, uh, who's a massive Calvados maker. Uh, they tie in really quite well with us. So they use small casks to mature their, uh, to mature their Calvados. Um, in fact, he, was, he sat, um, the original Christian Duan, uh, so three generations ago, he actually sat on his Calvados, uh, aging it, maturing it, uh, and playing about with it yeah. uh, for 20 years before he even sold a bottle. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Uh, so they That's really wanted to fit the market uh, perfectly, really. So that, that ties in with what we want to do. Do you know what I mean? So their ethos ties in with our ethos. So it was really good. Um, Christian Duan did get burnt by uh, a Scottish artillery previously. So they did take quite a lot of persuading. Uh, and actually, yeah. Angela actually had to go up to Christian Duan in, in France and say, guys, really, really enjoy your stuff. This is what we do. Uh, and had a, had a few sit-down sessions uh, with, with the guys at Christian Duan uh, to actually for us to get the casks, really. Uh, and that's what, you, that's what you see in front of you now, guys. It's a, it's a proper heartfelt collaboration uh, between Mac Mira and Christian Duan. Uh, yeah. I'll not go massively too in depth into yeah. tasting notes and stuff like that, guys. Uh, but 
uh, on a tasting panel uh, when we were producing this. Uh, one of the guys actually nicknamed it Apple Boom. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, and and yeah, that's, absolutely. And, and honestly, all day long. Yeah, all <laughs> day long. It all day long, indeed. It's a big boom of apples and pears. It's there. It's an orchard explosion in your mouth. It is. It's yeah, fantastic. It is. And listen, yeah, it's, I'm a massive fan, and we had to get it out there. We had to, like, you could, yeah. You know, we could have done a taste with McMahon without that, and I just thought, you know, we're going to throw it in there. I've got a beautiful big box. Let's put the, 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 you know, the kitchen sink at this. You know what I mean? Let, let's get it in there, you know? Yeah. And just to add on that as well, Matt's just said great stuff. It would be great to have the Apple Bomb included in the offer. Uh, in the background, I've been there emailing the uh, guys with the code. So we've actually managed to get the Apple Blom included on that 20% discount off yeah. for you as well. So that should yeah. be live now. So if you do fancy getting hold of the Apple Blom, you can add that in there as well. Unfortunately, the lead in um, is in some ways a good and a bad thing. There's literally none of it left uh, to get hold of. So Why? not only has Paul sorted you and out. We can, and we can't sell Caden Heads bottles. <laughs> yeah, so he's, he's sorted you out with a very hard to get hold of whiskey. So if you enjoy it, great. Don't enjoy it too much. You can't get hold of it anymore. Um, but yeah, uh, uh, Apple Blom. If you want to add that in there as well, that's available on the code as well. But yeah, I just like to say from from me personally, yeah, absolutely. Thanks for having us on. It's been an absolute pleasure. Yeah. Uh, um, you've been a great audience as well. Thanks for being very uh, interactive in terms of the chat. And uh, yeah, hopefully we'll we'll see you again in the near future. Excellent. Well, yeah, thank so you very much. I have to echo that myself, guys. But don't forget. Please check out our website as well, uh, macmuda.co.uk. Uh, we do have the stuff about our single casks uh, that you can buy for yourselves. We've got ready casks and reserve casks. So ready casks yep. basically can be bottled now and shipped to your home address. The price you see is the price delivered to your door. Uh, and ready casks is basically a five-year investment. Um, or fantastic. We can talk about it another time, not a problem whatsoever. Um, also, so yeah, so... Cane heads bottled us, but also if anybody's a member of the Scotch Malt Whiskey Society, yeah, we are now, yeah, yeah. distillery number 144. 144. I'm writing it down. Okay. So oh! <laughs> we just 144. 144. Uh, we, 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 That's important. The, they, they just released 144.1 um, and the bottles went to ballot. Uh, I wasn't lucky enough to get a bottle, even though I'm an SNWS member. And the McNair brand ambassador for Scotland, so I'm actually positively raging with no everybody at the moment. <laughs> I no did get to try it though at the Glasgow, uh, at the brand new open Glasgow room as well, because okay. that, yeah, that's well, my local mutation room. room. Yeah, mutation room. Yeah, yeah. Uh, it's beautiful over there. So, guys, if you're ever in Glasgow, uh, Mickey Plummer, you can hit me up on Facebook, Instagram, all that sort of good stuff. Be happy to share a jam with you guys. Um, uh, yeah, so the Stereo 144, I managed to try a taste of it. And it is. Did you meet? Did you meet Madeline? Did you meet Madeline? Yeah, I know Madeline. Yeah, I know Madeline. Yeah, so Ma listen, Ma Madeline. Madeline popped. Um, uh, she's popped into the festival. She had a. She took part in the the one of the specialised tastings we had the other day. Awesome. So yeah, she's great crack. And uh, yeah, yeah, you know what? Is. We're trying to have a relationship here between Belfast Whiskey Club and uh, S uh, SMW. SMWS. 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 Yes. Um, <laughs> you know, uh, and, and, you know, just for Northern Ireland and for, for Ireland, because there's nothing in Northern Ireland with that link at the moment. So we're trying to get that link sorted, which will be great. But yes, yeah, well done, sure. lad. Thank you. And listen, we'll see you again soon. Yeah, fingers crossed. Hopefully, guys. Enjoy Good. the rest Good. of your day and the rest of the week, guys. All the best. Cheers, guys. Take it easy. Bye -bye. Carl, I'll meet you over in the green room. Yeah, that's oh.